Destroy the things he made for you Disrespect, man, you get upset Cause you don't wanna hear the things I say to you But open rebuke is so much better than hear the love you get from the faith Open your heart, open your ear Here go a little wisdom to take Two tears and a prayer, give him heaven uh. Two tears and a prayer Two real for a hater Make it greater later Grateful for the favor of my life and what God gave I got my Bible on my side, man, as I stroll outside Everybody telling me don't go outside But there's a war out there in these streets And there's some souls out there I'm gonna reach Come on man, you tuning in to Give Em Heaven Podcast <laughs> That's a little something new for that new album dropping Broken and Contrite Gold, silver, precious stones, man In the mighty name of Jesus We got something new for y'all tonight You're gonna love this But before we do that One more time, y'all New creation for for those that know Brother Brian, man, you got to know where I come from, to know where I'm headed, man. To know where I've been, you got to know where I'm headed, right? I come from a neighborhood full of knuckleheads. Didn't nobody tell me God would heal me. They just put pistols on my lap, gave me, shoot that, sell this. Like, nobody told me, look, Brother Brian, look, God has a plan for your life. You don't have to go out there and hit a dead end road. You don't have to be amongst the murder and the evil. If you surrender to Jesus today, old things pass away, all things become new. You can fight different, you can love different, you can live different. This for everybody out there, man. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, hashtag this. New creation in Christ, y'all. Who told you? Huh? Who told you gangsters go to heaven? Who told you money make you real? Who told you pistols make you tough? You don't see all the dead bodies on the field? Who told you mercy's for the weak? Who said forgiveness is for chumps? Hey, they say a coward dies a thousand deaths, a soldier died but once. They mourn you for a week and they forget you in the Who told you God doesn't exist? Who told you God was just a myth? Who planted seeds of disbelief inside your mind so you could drift? Who told you Jesus doesn't love you? Who said you couldn't be forgiven? Hey, do you not know how much he loves you? Yo, do you not know the king is risen? Uh, who told you Christian rappers whack? Whoever said that man was whack? The truth they hit you hard, knock you flat down on your back. Who said Christian rappers whack? Whoever said that man was whack? This truth they hit you hard, knock you flat down on your back. Two things gonna happen. One, you gonna get mad. Hate me for correcting you for pointing I was bad. Or two, you get convicted and cry out because you sad. And ask God to forgive you for the trespasses you had. You either run to him or run from him. I just pray you come to him. You put down your books and guns. You say, Lord, I'm done with this. Run to him or run from him. I just pray you come to him. You put down your books and guns and you say, Lord, I'm done with this. Everything they told me was a lie. And I know that now. It's only right I hit the streets and I expose that now. Dirty devil, dirty devil should have killed me. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come and feel me Feel me with new strength again I'm feeling new inside Lord, I abide in you and follow you where you abide Feel me with new strength again I'm feeling new inside Cause I abide in you and follow you where you abide 
I confide in you with confidence, my Lord. Greater you see who lives in me than he who's of this world, yo. I confide in you with confidence, my Lord. Greater you see who lives in me than he who's a. Who told you God couldn't be trusted? I'm trying to tell you you could trust him. He loves you deeply, please believe me. He hates to see his children suffer. Hey, I don't know what all they told you. I don't even know who told him. I don't know that he's the answer. He gives hope, man, to the hopeless. I don't know what all they told you. I don't even know who told him. I don't know that Christ is the answer. He gives hope, man, to the hopeless. Yo, who told you, bro? Who told you you couldn't be forgiven? Who said it was over for you? Who said that you would always be in, in drugs and an addict? Who said you would always be an angry man? Who said that, that there was not a way Jesus died to make a way for you? Hashtag this. Let no sin have dominion over my life. Come on, hashtag that. Let me see everybody participating tonight. Let no sin have dominion over my life right now in the name of Jesus. I want you guys to truly understand that Jesus died to set you free from sin. Not that you continue to live in bondage as, you're, as a Christian believer. I believe in God. I, I'm a, I got to say, no, 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 no. Then why do you live in sin? Why do you live in sin? Come on, man. God, God set, died to set you free from that bondage. You don't, have to, you don't have to continue to be entangled with the things of the world. You don't have to continue to be entangled with the things of the enemy. You, you can live a new life in Christ today. What you got to do is surrender daily. What you got to do is make a choice today to choose life and not death in the mighty name of Jesus. The same way you said yes to the drugs, you better say yes to God. The same way you said yes to that dirty devil and his deception, you better say yes to the Lord. You better say, God, I make a covenant with you today. I surrender to you today i die daily lord i crucify myself daily to, hey to say to honor you god in my body this temple belongs to you holy spirit fill me with you fill me up right now in the name of jesus come on y'all everybody hashtag new creation in christ man let no sin have dominion over my life man this is the give them heaven podcast man you just tuned in with brother brian man I, just, I get a little excited when I think about the new things, the newness of God. There's nothing boring about him. There's nothing uh, lame about serving God. There's nothing, there's nothing like weak about it. It takes a strong man to humble himself and say, you know what? I can't do it my way, but I can do it your way. Strengthen me, King Jesus. Grace will, grace, listen, y'all. Grace will pr produce strength to help you overcome Grace will, will give you strength to not to not say yes to the ways of the world, the worldliness, not dressing the, like the ways. And I ain't talking about none of that church legalistic stuff. I'm talking about thinking in the worldly way, thinking like you can't for you don't have to forgive, thinking that you always got to be greedy, thinking that you that it's just about you. No, 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 no. Put yourself last and put others first. Put your, this goes for the person that always wants to be noticed. This goes for the pastor who wants the biggest church. This goes for the rapper who wants the biggest platform. You want to come in first? Then put yourself last. Go sit in the back and see how God elevates you. You got to decrease so he can increase. You got to decrease so his love, his forgiveness, his hope, his patience, his self-control can increase in your life. You want to be set free, right? Well, you got to come to the end of yourself. God will fill you up when you empty yourself. And I'm telling you right now, give him heaven podcast. God has a plan and his plan was never for you to walk around depressed and suicide racist and bondage and witchcraft and rebellious with pride god had a plan for you to walk in an identity and it's not what the homies call you it's not the tattoo on your body the identity that god has for you was for you to look more like his son to be christ-like to be filled with love to be filled with compassion filled with integrity come on y'all hashtag that make me new inside lord make me new renew my mind make me, give me a new heart take the heart of stone give me a heart of flesh God wants you to be new. And I'm telling you right now, if you're serious about a new life, if you're serious about saying no to yourself and coming to the end of yourself, then right now is the time. Right now you make a choice. Choose who you're going to serve today. Is it life or death? What are you going to do? Are you going to deny yourself or are you going to deny God? You've been, hey, you come, some of you go to church and you keep leaving the, leaving church services the same way you came, man. You keep going back to the same music, the same type of drugs, the same type of bottle of beer and liquor. You don't know how to say no to the things that entangle you. But you know what, God? God has called you to be empowered by his Holy Spirit. But the first, the first thing you need to do to be empowered is to empty yourself. Right now, empty yourself and say, you know what? You're right. I repent, Father God. I empty myself today because I want to be made new, Lord. I want to love 
love the way you love, God. I want to forgive the way you forgive, God. I want to think a, a new way of thinking, God. I want that old polluted mind, that street law, that street thug, that drug dealer, that, that whoremonger, whatever it is. I want that way out, God. I don't want to be greedy. I don't want to be unfaithful, God. I don't want to be a liar, God. I don't want to be a murderer, God. I want to say yes to who you are. Fill me with all of you, God, as I empty myself. Empower me to say no to the things my flesh wants to say yes to. I say yes to you today, Jesus. Come on, if you with me, hashtag that. I say yes, Jesus. I say yes, King Jesus. I say yes right now. Come on, man. This is the time that you empty yourself and make a choice who you're going to deny yourself for God. Come on. You want to see the fullness of God? He said, you will find me when you search and you seek for me with all of your heart. All of your heart. You got to make that choice. Come on. You got to make that choice. Father God, I pray right now for the for the for the person that's left watching. I pray right now for the families represented. I pray for that for that gangbanger that's watching. I pray for that for that prostitute Lord who keeps on giving herself for money or, or using things of the world of pleasure, God. I pray for that backslider, God, that they come home, Lord, that you begin to do something inside the mind, God. That you begin to, to renew things inside the mind, God. That you take the heart of stone, Lord. I pray for forgiveness, Father God. There's a there's somebody out there that don't know how to forgive. They don't know how to love, God. They been wounded by the world. They've been wounded by church. They've been wounded by family and friends. They don't know how to trust no more, God. Give them a new heart. Give them a new way to look at life. Give them a new newness, Father God, that only found in you, Father God. Fresh oil, fresh strength, by grace and faith, Father God. I declare them new creations in Christ. Baptize them in your love right now in the name of Jesus. Baptize them in that Holy Ghost fire right now in the name of Jesus. Every demonic devil and demon underneath the sound of my voice. Every devil of deception. Every devil of discord. Every devil of disbelief. Lord, re remove the hole from the minds. Loosen the hole from their minds right now, God. That they begin to see your way. That they begin to see your light. Your light that penetrates through the darkness, God. A new creation in Jesus. Come on. Come on, y'all. We say yes to you, Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. At this moment, at this time, right now. We're not promised tomorrow. At this moment, I say yes to you, God. I want to live the way you want me to live, Father God. I want to love the way you want me to love, Father God. Give me fresh joy, your fresh strength, fresh appetite that I want to spend more time with you God let me learn who you are more more of you Jesus I need more of you brother Brian needs more of you God as a kingdom soldier as a husband father God I'm asking for more of you God so I can lead a life I can serve the way you want me to serve no hidden motives or agenda for the God a new creation in Christ a new creation right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we welcome you Holy Spirit heal that broken heart right now father God heal that broken heart let that addict father God break the drug the drug. Get rid of those, those uh, drug dealing numbers, Father, or those friends that bring them back to bondage, Father God. Let them be connected to the things of God, Lord. Let them be connected to the things of you, Father God. Bring the backslider back right now in the name of Jesus. There's a backslider. You're so far. You feel like God won't forgive you. Come back home, bro. Come back home, sis. God has a plan for you. He loves you. You are not forgotten. He will never leave you nor forsake you. I declare these things over your life right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. A fire from heaven that burns out every year purity for the God. Let your anointing break the yoke. Let your anointing break the yoke right now. Give them heaven. Give them heaven. Give them heaven, Lord. Right now, heaven on earth inside of us, God. Everything that's heavenly stirred inside of us, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, y'all. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Say the name that set you free. Activate your faith. Cry out to Jesus and you shall be saved. Woo! Man, I want to see y'all. I want to hear some praise reports, man. We got an awesome Amen. night tonight. We got an awesome night tonight. You guys are going to be in store for something beautiful. And before we bring my brother, my the special guest, I, I just want to encourage you guys, man. I want to encourage you. Look, the same way that God can change my heathen heart. The same way that God can take the heart of a murderer and make it compassionate. The same way that God can take the, the tongue of a liar and make him a truth teller. Look, God can change things in your life. Whatever's dead, God can bring it to life. You say, I don't know how to love, but God can show you how to love with a new heart. And I declare that over your life because you're looking at somebody who didn't know how to trust. You're looking at somebody right now that didn't know how to love. I didn't know how to forgive. And I'm telling you, when they killed my brother, I was at a crossroad between truth, life, or death. Are you going to always bust your guns? Are you going to always revenge? Are you going to always fight the way you fight? Because if you do, you're going to go to the hell. If you do, you're going to go to the casket. You're going to go to the penitentiary. Choose life or death. 
and I chose life for the first time and it didn't make sense to my homies. It didn't make sense to my people. But I'm telling you right now, seven years later, I still stand strong in the name of Jesus. Why? Because I said yes to the one who can save. And there's someone out there, you've been saying yes to your ways. Today's the day to start saying yes to God with all your heart. Your allegiance, man, your allegiance has to follow Jesus. Your allegiance has to follow the kingdom of heaven. And I declare that over your life, man of God, woman of God. Today's the day of new creation. All things become new, old things pass away. I can't wait to hear awesome praise reports, man. Amen. Father God, thank you for who you are, Lord. Hey, y'all, I, I, I'm going I'm to bring in my special guest, uh, man. This is my brother, man, and I'm going to let him introduce himself. This man of God is, is powerful. He's out, he's out there giving this testimony. He's out there in the trenches. He's out there giving them heaven where God saved him from. He goes right back to the hoods, to the prisons, to the jails, to the streets. And so many people, man, they, they need to see that with their own eyes, that there's hope. That there's hope that when then in the story, there's a story in the Bible when this man called Legion who had many demons, many demons. Nobody can control him, nobody can hold him. It said that when he he seen Jesus, he fell on his knees. He fell on his knees. Did you come to torment me? Has my time come? And Jesus said, You know what? Who are you? He said, it's, we're, They're called Legion because there's many of us. You know what? All those, all those demons had to flee when Jesus commanded them, Leave them right now. And they left. And they begged to be, Can we go into the pig, into the swine? And you know what? All those spirits went into the pigs. And the pigs ran off the cliff. Want to know why? Because the plan is the enemy is to always kill, steal, and destroy. It didn't take long for him to take the pigs off the cliff. And that's what he wants to do with somebody today. The enemy's trying to run you off the cliff so you can come to the end of yourself. But you know what? Today is the day to come to the end of yourself. Come, die daily and say yes to Christ, man. I'm going to introduce this, the gangster preacher my brother man brother blanca man hey man what's up can you guys hear me pretty good yeah <laughs> what's up bro okay what's up canal yeah much love i just want to say first of all that that i'm uh it's an honor canal to be doing this with you and um uh, it's always an honor to do this with other fellow true soldiers canal <laughs> you know what i mean and um yeah, Kana, whenever you're ready, you let me know. I don't know if, uh, how you work it. Like, oh, man, we're ready, man. I, I, hey, hey, y'all, this is my brother, man. We're, uh, we're going to ask, uh, you can ask some questions in a little while. I'm going to have him uh, give a little bit of his testimony, where he's from, how God worked in his life, what God's doing now. So, man of God, t t let everybody know where you're from and, 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 and you know, and, and, and explain, man. Explain that where you were a believer in the beginning. Did you ever know, did you know about, because I started Catholic, so I knew God was real, but I didn't follow him. I just, okay, there's a God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So explain that. Did, did someone introduce you to God or was it was it a dramatic encounter? Let everybody know what your name is and, and what, what did they call you, man of God? All right, man. They call me the they call me the gangster preacher, fam. Mm. And uh, my name's my name's Isaiah Blancas. So I'm from Chuco, El Paso, Texas. Mm. So that's where I'm from. So so I'm from Texas too. So me and Brian actually done a few uh, events together. And um, and you know I just I just love my canal Brian because he's a straight up soldier just like me, man. And um and so I always knew we'd be doing some stuff together. He's gonna be on my show. Um, this Sunday doing a phone interview with me. Um, I guess what I'll do is I'll start off giving uh, my, my, my testimony. And then I wanted to share a little bit of a, a, a sermon, very, not, not long sermon, just very short that goes with it. Amen. But I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to give a, I have a book out called from the streets to the throne by Zia Blancas available on Amazon. Come on. Um, it, it's too much to, to kind of, um, I guess give everything, but I'm going to give you guys, you know, what, what I can. Okay, so I'm going to start off when I was like eight years old. Um, when I was um, eight, I had a good life. And actually, um, when I was eight, we had moved from El Paso to Corpus Christi. And that's where you're from, right, hey, Kanan? Yeah, Corpus Christi, yeah. Yeah, so I, 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 I had moved to Corpus Christi for a year. And I remember, um, you know, being on the ocean as a little kid and playing with, like, boogie boards and stuff like that. And, <laughs> you know, too. all, all, all yeah, all that stuff and jelly jellyfish biting jellyfish me and stuff and on the ocean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, a lot of them, bro, stinging me. Um, I remember it was tons of them, but but yeah, I remember um, out there, um, fireflies, different things like that that you don't see out here, you know, in Chuco Town. Yeah. And um, we ended up moving back when I was uh, eight, still almost nine. And uh, I remember I had a lot of love, man, in, in, in my house. I remember, um, uh, you know, feeling loved. I had a mom. I had a dad. You know, I had my 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 my, my little sister, and um, it's crazy because um, stuff got crazy really quick. Yeah. 
um, in my household, um, it went from, from me feeling love to like, uh, my dad not coming home. And, well, you know, later on I found out, you know, he was sleeping with women, doing drugs, doing all this types of stuff. And, um, uh, and I could just feel something changing. And eventually what ended up happening is, um, when I was nine years old, my dad ended up leaving with my aunt and having kids and they left to Califas to California. Man. And, uh, and so, um, I went from having a real good life to a real bad life instantly. Um, we ended up moving from a nice place to, uh, to a, a neighborhood out here, uh, called the Jackie Robinson projects, the Jackie's projects out here in Chuco town, mm. which was a really bad area. Um, and, and I went from having a great life and being able to go to the store. I remember stuff like this, like being able to tell my dad, Hey man, you know, um, can I get a toy or a candy or something like that? And they would get it for me. So I went from that to, to growing up in this area that was so rough that you couldn't even walk through that block. Cause we would beat you and leave you in boxers and, and, and rob you for everything you had, yeah. you know? And, and, uh, and, and that's, that's how it went. So what, what, what started going on is, um, uh, my mom started telling me that I look like my dad and stuff like that. It started, um, I, it affected her a lot. So she started kicking me out. Mm. So pretty much from the age of nine till around almost 13, I was homeless pretty much all the time you know, in those streets. Man. And so I went from having a good life to being kicked on these streets with spray paint all over the place, heroin needles on the floor, you know, uh, prostitution, you know, gangsters, organized crime, you know, all, all that stuff. That's an ugly you know, feeling, um, man. That's an ugly feeling for yeah. someone at that age to not know yeah. what's what's home. Why, why, I'm, why can't I go to the place that I'm supposed to call home? And I remember uh, there was a time when my, my mom did me the same way, walking with a, in Corpus on Ocean Drive with a, with a black, but it was a black, a black bag full of clothes, man. You know what I mean? And and, and it was at that time where, where, where like you said, it, the streets. Well, you you begin to you begin to make the streets your home. If I don't have a home here, yeah, I'll make the streets a home. Go ahead, man of God. Yeah, that, very similar. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, exactly what you're saying is true, Canal. And um, and you know, for 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 me, the the crazy thing was is that that I had a good life. My homeboys didn't. That's all they ever knew. Yeah. Uh, one of my homeboys that was nicknamed Crook, that's in my book. Uh, he's done like over 15 years in the pen and he changed his life, man. There's out of everyone. I'll say this out of everyone. There was like a good 300 of us oh. from, from that street gang. Um, I got maybe that's a lot. Yeah. Two or three saved man. out of all of them. All the rest are either dead in prison or sick. Every single one. And, and the ones that I got, to, to touch for God's glory were homies that have done over 25 years. One of them did 20 years in Seg and Cofield. Um, and like I said, my homeboy Crook, you know, did a uh, 15, uh, me, myself, I did like from the age of nine to uh, in my early twenties, uh, like a good eight, eight and a half years altogether, yeah. you know, and I, and I was the craziest one out of our age. Can I, cause I know me and you are a similar age and, um, I was the, 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 the most rascal. You know, so what ended up happening is um, I ended up getting beat up with bats kind of, by, by, by vatos that were like triple my age mm. in, in that area. Because to be honest, I was terrified. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I, I didn't know nothing about that life. You know, and, um, and, and, and it was such a, a dramatic change, yeah. you know, that, that I, didn't, I didn't know how to handle it. And uh, so I got beat up with bats so bad that I almost lost one of my eyes. Mm. I went to the hospital and they told me if you get hit in your eye again within like the next six months to a year, you're going to lose your eyesight in one eye. And these were dudes that were like 21, you know, to 25, I was nine years old. So at that age, um, I, I, I said in my, in, in my heart, in my mind, this will never happen to me again. Mm. I said, I'm either going to be one of the most feared gangsters in El Paso or I'm going to be respected no matter what. Yeah. And, uh, and so at nine years old is, um, when I started doing time, that's the first time I got locked up. I was nine years old Man. for a beer run and, 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 um, and, and, and the El Paso, um, detention center. And, um, which now I've preached that, which is crazy, right? Later on, years later, like 20 years later, but you, but you run out I the did... store with a Mickey or an OE. 
Nah, man, you know, I would, I would, bro, I would, I would do beer runs so crazy that, uh, like, what we would do, me and my homies, bro, is we'd park, like, two, three trucks at, at a store, and um, someone would, would, would hold the clerk at gunpoint, at night point, and we'd, we'd, like, take all the beer and all, all the trucks. Man, so it, so was, it we, was, like, robberies going on. It, you was already, yeah, pretty you was much, yeah. <laughs> you was already getting for robberies, yeah. man. Yeah, but, but one thing that I can say is that um, my homeboy Crook, he, he told me this one time. He says, you know, um, we used to play, man. This is how we, you know, we would play as kids. He says, do you remember when we would throw bullets up in the air and, 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 and uh, they would hit on the floor and, and pop and shoot different areas? And I, and I told him, yeah. And he was telling me, my wife is, my wife's white, man. She's from Ohio. I met her preaching out there. That's how I got married to my wife. Amen. And, um, and with that, you know, she was tripping out. She's like, well, you guys used to play like that? And he's like, yeah, you know, it didn't, it didn't compute in our heads at that time. That we could have got shot, you know, with a bullet. Man, that's you know, crazy. he says, "Yeah, that's crazy." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so he 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 said because his family had lived in the Jackie's projects because it's an old gang out here Yo. since the seventies. So, um, what 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 he what he told my wife it was like is he's like he he told her, "Have you ever seen those movies where they're in Brooklyn and they're looking out their their windows and you see nothing but like ghetto and stuff like that?" He's like, "Well, that's how it was for me and me and Weddle, which was my nickname, yeah. you know, the white boy in English." He said, uh, that's, that's how it was for us growing up in Jackie's. That's how it was, mm. you know, um, even as little kids, when you just walk out of your, your, your project apartment or in that area in the Jackie's area, uh, that we controlled, um, you know, in our radius or whatever, just crime, um, crime everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you literally walk out your door and right away it, it was evil. Yeah. You know, hey, who are we gonna rob today? Who are we gonna stab? Who are we gonna shoot? You know, um, you know, what 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 kind of drugs we're we gonna use, what party we're we gonna go to, you know, just nothing but evil. So you're you know hurt, what I mean? Your hurt turned into anger growing up, huh? Yeah, I was gonna bring that up too, can I because uh, my 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 hurt turned into anger and hate. Yeah. And it's instead of me, like uh some people, you know, might take it out like uh in 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 a a crying way or like, you know, cry. I didn't take it like that. My heart got hard as a stone at that. Even at that young age, I became very hard hearted. And so, so I, I, it turned into nothing but hate and it got worse as time went on. And, and, you know, growing up there, I'll say this, well, I'm a, my, all my homeboys didn't have dads. Like my homeboy Coco, he's one of the guys that I, that I told you, um, got saved by me. I preached to him for 18 years not before he got saved. He's done over 25 years behind the, behind mm. bars man and and so so he's serving god now yeah. and he's out there in florida doing good come on you know he don't he don't do drugs or nothing no more he was he would, he would shoot heroin all that and i worked with this homie for 18 years i never gave up on him mm. because i i knew god could change his life yeah. just like he changed mine you know and we're the same types of people and, and i'll and i'll get into that deeper right now but all my homeboys, like Coco, met his dad in prison doing a life sentence. Wow, man! Uh, a, a lot of my homeboys' moms um, were either in the gang; they were selling heroin, coke, dope, stuff like that. Almost none of the dads were there. If they were, they were into cartel stuff, organized crime stuff, or in the gang. Yeah. Um, and and, and uh, some of you know my homeboys' moms were prostitutes. Yeah. So so you know, for me, those homeboys that I'm talking about are dead now. I have a lot of homies that are dead because I was I got involved with with people that you know controlled a lot of stuff in El Paso and Juarez and and I know literally probably like a good three hundred people that have died already mm. that I knew yeah you know what I mean and so um that that I knew like that were homies and, and um and and these two these two homies that they're dead now they're dead and gone um you know from living that lifestyle uh, their mom would prostitute with the homeboys, mm. you know what I mean? So I could just imagine what that would do to their mentality, Yeah, you know, with them growing up and seeing their mom sleep with their own homeboys for money to go get a fix, Yeah, you know? And so, so that was, that became my reality. So when I went to the D home, you know, it became normal. My gang was a real known gang. You would see our gang scraped in the metal, um, you know, doors in the detention homes, jails, all that stuff. Mm. Um, so I felt like I had this reputation to keep as well. So I just became harder and harder. My heart got harder and harder. Mm. And, um, I remember sometimes even at that young age, Canale, it would be snowing sometimes, which is rare in El Paso, but it would get cold. And I remember I'd have to walk miles to go to some nicer apartment complexes where they had saunas where I could sleep 
and and actually be warm because I was in the streets at that young age. Yeah. You know, so so my life drastically changed from good to bad immediately. Mm. And, and um and so it, it it made me um it made me snap in a bad way. Yeah. I can remember when I was like 12 years old in a detention home, man, seeing uh, this one little kid get raped, bro, by like six dudes. Mm. And, and I was in my cell in the detention home, and I looked at that, you know, I thought in my head, that homie's weak. That's mm. never going to happen to me. And and I said, you know what I mean? And, and after a while, this this kid, it's in my book. I mean, it's just so much. You'd have to read, you'd have to get my book. Yeah. But I, I, this dude started um, actually inviting him into the room to rape him. And I think it was a mechanism for him so he wouldn't feel like they were taking his manhood from him or his childhood from him. And um, so so that stuff started becoming normal to me. Yep. You know, at that young age, I'd already started seeing, um, uh, you know, shootings, murders, uh, a lot of my homeboys dead, you know, shooting up, dying right in front of us. You know, I, I had seen one of my, my homeboy, in, in my homeboy's uh, little brother, he was probably like three years old by some other kid from another gang smash his brains in the projects we were from and his brains man. were all over the floor. Man, man, you know man. what I mean? So, so that's what, what, what became my reality. Yep. That dark, that, so darkness, I became, be, that darkness become, be, it, it starts to become natural and normal that we accept it. The more you, the more you uh, see it, the more you're around it, it becomes natural. And, and you're like, well, this is life. You know, this, yeah, this, exactly. This, this is what it is. Yeah. Keep exactly. It, you know, you're right because it, it, you know, most people say, uh, oh, this and that, but me and all the homies, you know, we're like, this is normal. This is normal. Yep. This is what it is. Yep. You know what I mean? If you're going to live this life and you want to live thugged out like this, then then you accept, and I had accepted this since that young age, that I was going to die in prison or or, or I was going to die in the streets. Yep. That's crazy, you know what man. I, mean? I, I, I know that because growing up, we all knew, even as homeboys, like, oh, we're going to go get our number. Meaning we already knew we're going to go to the pen or the casket. Yeah. For us, dying in a, in a blaze of glory was honor. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, hey, yeah. you, go out, you go out like that or you or you go to the penitentiary. Like, that's that's crazy. We signed up for that and we knew it and we saluted it and we do it. We're just yeah. waiting for our time and our ticket, man. And, and man, yeah. that's crazy. The enemy deceived us even at that age to think like, yeah. you know what? You're going to die. And you know what? But if you die like this, it, 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 you're real. If you die like this, then, then you get honor in your death in the streets. And you, man, but it was all deception. You're so right, bro. You're right. And you know what, can I um just what you're saying is I tell people a lot of times and when I talk to, I preach everywhere now just like you do, Canal, but I like you, you fly and I tell you, well, you fly and you're taking care of the sky, I'll be taking care of the road because I drive. <laughs> <laughs> we have talked about that one time, yeah. right? But, uh, but, but what, you know, I tell, I tell people all the time, like, well, at that age, what I aspire to be, most kids want to be doctors, lawyers, you know, um, cops or, you know, something like that, something good. Yeah. Us, me and my homeboys, we wanted to be gangsters. Yeah, that was our reality. Yep. You know, we saw homies with low riders with fine girls and you know, dope and and money and stuff like that. And and, and we wanted that. Like for uh, for us, yep. going to prison was like going to college. It was like a badge of honor. Bro, when I when I when I graduated my uh, when I finally made parole. And finish my first thing of parole, you would have thought I had my college degree. I was like, I made parole. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was happy. People looking like, yeah. so what? I was like, man, you got to understand where we from. We don't make parole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and especially here in Texas. In Texas, can I? Because in Texas, you know, I, I, uh, Texas is, is, is gangster. Man, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, for real. Ain't that you crazy know, how, how that identity comes with, and we like we, we, we take on that enemy's identity. It says in the Bible that God had an identity for us when we was in our mother's womb, but we take. That's that, right. When you don't take that identity and you let the world give you an identity you begin to accept the things that come with that identity which is death it comes with it seems fun at first pleasure the buzz of a blunt yeah and all of a sudden you have you have shootouts you have uh, fake friends like you have yeah. court costs you have you get you get on yeah. the great shackled up on the great goose now you're headed to different yeah. compounds and not and it's crazy because yeah. you don't follow nobody's rules but the gangs and the guards were not even the guards rules but the gang rules and it's a politic yeah. of another world and man that's crazy yeah. now i say i always tell the juvenile and they make follow God's rules. It's so much better than the gangs and the guards, man. Oh. Hey, man, that's that's right, bro. Um, yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. And I, um, so, like, when I was um, 13, I, I you, started taking... You, hold on, like, let me well, ask you something. Did, did anybody yeah. introduce God in your life? Like, anybody, a, a grandma, a tío, a tía, a neighbor, somebody well, ever, ever pray for yeah, you? Yeah, trip out, trip out on this. Um, my grandma's the one that ended up, because I ended up in a, a, a school where I, I get kicked out of like 13 schools. Yeah. 
when I was a little kid. So by the age of 11, I, I was in the school and I was in a big program mm -hmm. for troubled kids. And I was still one of the worst ones there. And they had this cell there that was like a lockdown cell, like in a detention home. Mm. I had a little window and a little food plate thing and everything. And I was always in there almost every day because I was still one of the worst up in, up in that school. And, and so they called my grandma because my, my mom put her down, I guess, as a contact. Yeah. So she came over there and she would, she would start dealing with me and stuff like that. She found out what was going on. I ended up moving with her. She was a preacher. Man. Her and my grandpa. And, but the thing is, is that when, when I ended up with her, you know, she would always tell me, I, I always say in my, it's in my book too, where, you know, they, they, she said, you know, Hey, um, Jesus loves you, mijo, and this and that and all that stuff. And, and I'll be like, all right, grandma, whatever, you know, we weren't disrespectful back in the days. I was, uh, you know, you get beat for that. Yeah. You watch your mouth you know? around my mama. You could, my grandma, you couldn't cuss, man, for real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. It, it was a respect and, for her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um, and so, so when she would tell me this, I'll just be like, yeah, okay, grandma. But in my head, I'll be like, yeah, right. This Jesus character. I'm like, there ain't no God. I would think I'm God. Man. You know I mean, I control what I control in my destiny. And what made you, you know, what, what made you, what made you think, uh, when you look back at it now, what made you, when you, what do you think put that in your, in your heart, in your mind? Like there is no God. Like, was it because you suffered so much because you went through so much pain? You're like, it can't be no God because, because I'm down here going yeah. through hell. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's exactly what I felt, yep. and, and um and 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 I I would think, where if this God was so loving, yep. you know, then why why didn't why didn't he um you know let me keep my my life with my mom my dad Man. you know what I mean because that became so distant you know from me and and I didn't even go to schools and none of that no more I started drug dealing and 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 always locked up because it would get me anger inside to see kids. You know, playing with their moms and dads, would, you know, bro, at I basketball finna, games. I was just finna say that. But it, it used to anger me when I seen families that were together. It, it angered me inside because I yeah. was hurting. I hated to see someone else with their dad because I wanted to I wanted to be with my, my mom, my dad, and I, and, and here here we go in, in the streets or in the in the juvenile cells and headed to prison and I'm and I'm always like, why couldn't I have that family life? Especially when you watch TV and you see full house and all these sitcoms with families yeah. are together, you're sitting back like Yeah. You know, like I wish when, like my dream was that, like my dream was that we would have stayed together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, mine too. Uh, you know that, that that was like a fairy tale already, though, to me. But you know, I I, I tell a, a lot of people because they said, you know, if you if if you could have, would you have went back with your dad and your mom? They would have got together and said, of course I would have, man. I didn't want that life. That life, it's it's like I was thrown into that. I was nine years old. You know what I mean? So what is a nine year old supposed to do? And back in those days, there was no cell phones. I didn't have anyone's number. There was no contacts. You know, it was pay phones. Yeah. You know oh, what yeah, I, mean? I remember the pay phones. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so, um, so, so yeah, when I, you know, I ended up there, um, I, 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 I started sniffing paint since I was nine, you know, smoking weed, doing all that by the age of 13, you know, my grandma was so poor. Uh, she lived in a mobile home park on the east side of El Paso and she was so poor mm. that, um, all we would eat every day was burnt beans. And, and I remember, you know, her always saying like, I Juan to my grandpa, que me los frijoles. You know, I burnt the beans again and you'd be burnt <laughs> beans all the time. Hey, we, you know, everyone, and, every Mexicano on the West Coast grew up on beans. I love grandma's beans. Free fried beans in the morning, beans on tortilla, <laughs> beans, everything. <right? laughs> yeah, I, 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 I like the I was sick of them, bro, because that's all we would eat. So uh, my uncle, you know, uh, which was very, very respected um, OG too. Yeah. Um, I ended up li living in a room with him. He was real crazy, not normal in his mindset either. Um, he got like 12 bucks of food stamps a, a, a month. Yeah. And he would have like these sardines, bro, with hot sauce. <laughs> and, and when he would when he would open them, I would be like, man, this is like a steak. You know what I mean? For real. Like, I, you know, yeah. So I was all excited to eat those. And, you know, and we'd drink, you know, the little green Mickeys and all that. You were talking about the 40s yeah. and all that. You're talking about the old yeah, food so, stamps where they came like, yeah, colors, like the school. dollars, the old school yeah. stamps. Yeah. 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 And so, and so, um, yeah, kind of. So when I was 13, I, I started getting deeper into dope dealing and all that. Um, started selling um, rushes, weed, started all, all that stuff. Did you ever, let me ask uh, you something, even in your times of suffering and heartache growing at that age, did you ever cry out to God before? I remember nights when I said, I remember, I didn't even know who I was crying to, but I said the word God in my, it went in the cry. Like, I remember being like the same thing, where I'm going to sleep, it's raining, I crawl underneath a, a truck just to, just to stay dry. And I remember saying, God, 
And I remember, and now when I look back, I was even saying his name then, but just didn't know him. I didn't know who I was crying out to, but his name would come. And I, and I still angry, but his his name would come out my mouth like, oh, God. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy when someone's hurting. The first, even if they don't believe, the first thing they cry out is Jesus or God. You know what I'm saying? Was there ever yeah, a prayer? Know, uh, did you ever did you ever just cry out to him or talk to him one time? Only one time. And that's when I had first went to a D home. One of the first times I was in a D home and I put in my book. And because my mom, my dad went to church. Mm. So I remember that as being peaceful. So when I was in a detention home, I had I had said, hey, Jesus, if you're real or God or whatever, because there was some guy reading a Bible or whatever. You know, get me out of here and I'll change. But you know, I didn't mean it, bro. <laughs> you know me. what I mean? Yep, man. I, I think just I, did the I just same wanted thing. to get out. I just wanted to get out. If but that were... was the only time. I, yeah, after that, I didn't. As a matter of fact, I tried killing myself uh, multiple times, man. man. Uh, I still have slits on my wrist that you could see till this day. They're so deep. You was a cutter. And um, you used to cut yourself. Yeah, well, I tried killing myself a few times. I, I cut myself, yeah, and um, because I was just so so depressed, so man, so down, man. and you know. And in our days, you know, we would hear like in my book, I put like, you know, Mary Wells is my favorite old artist, you know, I'll hear Tupac, Cypress Hill, Dr. J, all them home, you know. So in those days, it was hardcore gang, gangster gang banging and all that going on. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and it just amped you up. And um, so so I went from uh, like, I'll, I'll speed up a little. I was probably like uh, 14. I was already making a lot of money every day. Every day I could buy whatever I want. I'll get gold chains out of Rolex already. Um, you know, all that stuff. My uncles were very respected, um, organized crime members. I'll just say that. I, I don't want to say no more too much about that, but, uh, they had big connections in the, in, in the dope world. Yeah. And, and, um, and so with, with, with that, um, I got connected to certain people where when I was like 14, I was able to move like hundreds of pounds and stuff like that, even at a young age. Man. Wow. So I was real, real crazy, real respected. Um, I will say this. One time I had like, I think 500 pounds bro, under my grandma's trailer, under her skirt of her trailer. And she told me, she told me, God gave me a, a, a vision and, and, it, and, it, and God showed me an anaconda under our trailer, squeezing the life out of the trip, out of our, out of our, our, our home, out of our trailer. Wow. It tripped me out. It tripped me out. I moved the whole 500 pounds. Kind of. <laughs> wow. She you know? called it, she, the, God showed her the spirit that was behind it. A serpent. Yeah. A snake. Yep. That's crazy. Yep. And an anaconda. An anaconda. That. Yeah. Like it was, it was something big. Yeah. It's that squeezed you, yeah. life out of you. Yep. Man, that's crazy. Yeah. So, so when that, I started going to Juarez, Mexico. I started crossing dope over uh, the big thing out here in Chuco town at the time, probably out where you're from too in Texas, Roches mm. was a big thing. The, the, the day rape drug or whatever they call it in America. But you know, out here we call it Roches, oh. you know, we didn't do that to, to do that to girls or nothing. We just got high off that had heroin in it. Yeah. So I was, I was taking at that age, kind of probably like a good hundred pills a day. That's how high my tolerance was to these pills already. Everything I did, I did to a fullest. So I was already, um, doing acid, drinking, weed, uh, cocaine. I mean, every single thing you can think of, all the drugs, bro. And, um, and, and, and it, I remember sometimes, um, people dying off taking one or two. Yeah. I was taking a hundred a day, every day. Yeah. God's grace. Was like, going like, That's a lot of pills. Yeah. And I'll take like, I'll pop like 15, 20 at a time, bro. Mm. Um, you know, and I'll get blitzed. I, sometimes I'll wake up for for stabbings and stuff like that, and attention. I'm like, well, what am I here for? I didn't even know what I was there for. Mm. You know, because I, I was so gone. The devil had me so lost. And so when I, when I was a uh, 14, I, I was the type of person already at that age that I was very respected already. Uh, that that dream, you know, which was a lie from the devil, was coming true yeah. over my life. And, and, um, I was the type of person that if you even looked at me wrong, I would stab you or beat you till you were shaking on the floor. And, um, and I loved it. I loved it. Um, I love stabbing people. I would use a, a, a screwdriver back in the day mm. and my homeboys would tell me, um, Hey, why don't, why don't you sharpen your screwdrivers? I was known as a stabber in my neighborhood. Mm. And, and, and they had guns and all that too. I just love stabbing people. I thought it was more up close and personal. Yeah. I wanted you to see me. 
you know, my face while I was stabbing you. And, um, and I could throw blows too. So sometimes, you know, I'll throw blows with people just so they, they could say I, I couldn't beat them up and then stab them. Mm. And, uh, so I, I would leave them dull and, and put the tip of the, the screwdriver on my hand. So it had more force because it was, it was tougher for the, the screwdriver to pop into your, to the skin, Yeah. but it would make a, a pop sound. Like it would go like pop like that. When you stab someone, they'll freak out, bro. Their eyes will get all big and crazy. And so that's the kind of person I, I already was at that age. You know, I was a straight up little thug, yeah, demonic, you know, a little rascal. Demonic. Very demonic. Yep. And, and it got worse. It got worse. Uh, by the age of 15, um, I remember, um, I, I'll say this. This is in my book, too. Uh, it's just so much, man. I, I, I really recommend that they get my book, whoever's watching. But and I'll, and I'll say all that at the end. But I remember one time I was with this homie, bro. And um, he was a cholo too, right? He dressed mm. just like us, cause we dressed uh, us. We dressed like with Dickies, Dickies you flannels. know, either Cortez, <laughs> yeah, bombitas, Cortez. flannels, white shirts, all, all creased out. Hey, bro, and, I remember uh, the group home. They gave me my first. They, you get a certain amount of money to go get your clothes. Hey, man, take me to Walmart. I want my Dickie suits. <laughs> get, go get my. Yeah. <laughs> I spent all yeah, my money on I... my Dickie suits, man. Blue, khaki, and green yeah. and brown. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I know all those colors. The the, the light, the light brown dicky ones, huh? I like those too. That was our but, wardrobe. Um, That's crazy, right? Yeah, it was. It was, bro. And then the muscle shirt underneath, the, the white shirt and all that. White beater, yeah. White beater, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so yeah, that, that's how we dress like like gangsters from the fifties or sixties or whatever, you know. Man, bro. And uh, and so yeah, that that you know that became my lifestyle and um I remember I was with this homie, bro, and dressed the same, bald, because I used to be bald, have scars all over my head from cops beating me with flashlights and always beating me with billy clubs and stuff. I, I man, I hated cops. Yeah. I mean, I didn't care who you were, but but I especially hated cops and law enforcement. Yeah, the authority. And, I think and, it, it was the authority thing that that they, they, they made it. They made it. It made them our enemies. Like I'm finna, I'm not gonna say yeah. to your rules. You make a rule, we break a rule. Yeah, it was the authority. Yeah. Thing. Cause one thing when I came to Jesus, yeah. man, my first thing I did was submit to laws. I submitted to authority. I started putting my seatbelt on. I started Me following too. the laws of the land, baby. You know what I mean? Me too. Amen. And, and you know, in the Bible, it, it, it pretty much says that. And I, you know, you can't be a man of authority unless you're a man under authority. Come on now. That's what it is. So yeah, you know, um, I, I was with this dude, bro. And then he starts telling me, hey, well, and I was like, what's up? And he's like, I think, I, I believe you're one of, of Satan's chosen. And he's like, you know, and he would slang hard too, uh, yeah. more than me, him and his mom. And uh, we're in their apartment and he started telling me, I'm going to tell you something. Just don't please let no one know about what I'm going to tell you. And I'm like, all right, what's up? And he's like, um, we worship the devil, you know, in this house. And that's why the devil gives us power to make money and do what we do. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, I was like, whatever, man. Like, I didn't care. I didn't believe in God or the devil, to be honest. I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, I just made them talk. I was like, yeah, let's just pass the weed or whatever. You know what I mean? And um, so so he kept telling me stuff, bro. Then he tells me, you know, uh, I believe you're one of the chosen ones because you have no fear. You know, you're going to die. You know, and, and I believe you're one of Satan's chosen ones. Mm. He's like, would you like would you like, you like to sell your, your soul? And I'm like, for what? And he said, for a pound of weed. And I said, you're going to give me a pound right now? And he said, yeah. And I said, to sell my soul to the devil. He said, yeah. I said, let's do it right now. Wow. And, and, and so, and so he was like, he was like, all right. And so we shaved my head. He, he put some stuff on my head, bro. He lit some candles and he was reading some stuff, you know, out of the demonic Bible, I guess, or whatever. And I saw, I saw my soul for so, a pound of weed, so bro. So you made a covenant with the enemy. Literally. You made yeah. it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. And, and you know, and I didn't believe in it. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh, it's and, real and, though. It's real when you. It's real. Yeah, when you dedicate that and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm willing. It's the same thing on salvation. I'm willing to, sur to, to, to surrender to you. Yeah. When you say to, the same thing with the dark side. When you say I'm willing to surrender to you, the enemy does have you. He has access now because you've given him full permission to attach to you. So yeah, that was a real covenant that you made, huh? That yeah, that's right. And you know what's crazy, out is after that, it's like my 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 violence intensity level intensified. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And and what I started doing was stabbing dudes like crazy. Like more, and, more know, bloodshed, more innocent blood, more blood. Way, way more. Yep. And not not only was I stabbing them, but I was jumping on them now and grabbing their blood in my hand and licking it and laughing at them. Oh yeah, straight demonic. Yeah, straight demonic. Yo, I see that now. And um I, I not too long ago I was with a homegirl 
and and she's one of the ones that I preached to her, her nickname Silent, and she's out here and she's she's trying to be a a counselor for kids now. Yo. She's one of the homegirls I was able to preach to and um, did a lot of time too. And, you know, my wife doesn't understand this life. You know, she grew up in the country seeing deer and, you know, stuff like that. You know, I grew up seeing heroin needles and people get shot and stabbed up and all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Big difference. And, uh, and, and so my, my wife was sitting there when me and Silent were talking, she went with us, we went to go pray for her and stuff like that. And uh, she, uh, she told me one time, she says, um, you know, she was telling my wife one time we were with Weddle and we we're in a party in, in our hood. And she says, and, and you could always tell Weddle had a fake smile on his face. Yeah. Like he would act like he was happy, but he, he was not happy at all. Yeah. He was very, he, he, he was, it was all fake. It was all show. Like he would act happy just doing his drugs, but then he'll become very evil. Yep. Zero, and she said one, one time, yep. yeah. And she said one time we're, we're with Weddle and we're his homeboys and homegirls. And she says, and, and I'm not lying to you. She told me, it was not even Weddle talking no more in his shape. His face was shape shifting. Yep. And she said, and, and, and she said, and I, and all of us were paranoid. Yep. Even around Weddle, mm. e even us. And, um, that tripped me out, bro. I had never heard of that. And so I was like, wow, you know, that was, that was kind of crazy. You know what I mean? But she says I was speaking, but it was like demonic tongues. It wasn't even, it wasn't even yep. me speaking anymore. Yep. And, and so, you know, my grandma, I had told her, yeah, I sold my soul for a pound of weed, you know, joking around and stuff. And it, well, I wasn't joking, but I was, I was joking around with her. Yeah. You just Man, she, she took in, it in a mocking. Yeah. Way. She took it real serious. Yeah. She took me straight to a church and they started praying for me. And it's crazy kind of because I felt peace when I was in there. I, had, I hadn't felt peace since I was with my dad and my mom when I was younger. Mm. And I felt peace. But then as soon as I walked out those doors, I had like 103 or 104 fever. I was dying. Mm. And they took me to the hospital. I couldn't keep nothing down in my stomach. I was rolling around. I was sick as a dog. And, and, you know, you would think that that would make someone snap. You know what I mean? Like, hey, God's real. Or, you know, there's a God. Yeah. But I didn't. I was like, yeah, that's just, you know, that's just coincidence. You know what mm. I mean? That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Instead of, instead of understanding that and realizing that. And so I, I, at 15... I remember uh, I, I ended up getting stabbed. I got in a, a, a fight with like 10 dudes because everyone that knows me in the, in the streets out here that, that were my homies, they all tell my wife, if you're with Weddle and there was even 40 dudes there and there was three of you, he's gonna Weddle go. would already be taking, he's going to go all out. He's going to go. He's going to take a screwdriver out and you already know you can't run. That, that it's going to be a fight yeah. no matter what, even if we die. She said, that's how your husband was. They always tell my wife about me. And so um, I, I remember that time I, I was by myself and some dude pulled a, a, a knife out. I pulled the knife out. I was like, let's get down. And it was like him, 10 of his homeboys. It was just me. I ended up getting stabbed in my stomach. I stabbed like three or four of them dudes. Mm. And um, they left, man. Still scared. And I was laughing at them still. I was all pilled out. Yeah. And um, I remember I go with my uncle, man, and um, my meat was hanging out like on my stomach. It was like, and, and squirting blood. And you could see like the bubbles all over my meat, you know, when you get a, a, a deep cut. Yeah. And um, I was squirting blood. And um, I remember I pushed my meat in, man. Mm. I pushed my, my own stomach in with my finger. And I told my uncle, hey, so sew me up. And he sewed me up, bro, like, like you know, uh, with, with a regular needle and thread, bro, like if you're sewing a shirt or something. He sewed you up? And Yeah, he sewed me up, bro. And then we put a little Vaseline on it and I put a patch on it, bro, with, with some tape. And I kept partying, bro. I never went to a hospital. It 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 it, it, uh, it healed back kind of kind of crazy though, didn't it? It, it left a crazy no, you scar. know, yeah, I have a scar, but it's a straight scar since I didn't go to the hospital it's straight. But when I squeeze my stomach, you could see like where it's where it's the puncture wound or whatever. Man, man. So man. it's still there. But I was but I was I was fifteen. I didn't go to the hospital. That was my mindset though. Fifteen, I was already on house arrest for stabbing dudes. I've been already caught for everything you can think of. But I was on house arrest for stabbing dudes that. Got my bracelet off, went to Cali, you know, gang bang out there too in Oakland, uh, Hayward, LA, all those areas. It's in my book. Yeah. Um, and even and even out there, they thought I was crazy. You know what I mean? Because I was down. And um, and so so uh, at 16, um, I ended up getting my ex pregnant. And uh, and you know, I, I was a bad person, Canal, you know. Um I, I had went from, from selling all that to like selling major, major drugs, dr big time drug deals. I was doing deals with 
dudes 30, 40. Bro, I'd roll around when I was 15 with dudes that were like 30, 40 years. They were they were terrified of me. Yeah. That, that so I had got that respect that I that I was wanting. And that I said they're gonna fear me or respect me. I had got it. And um I was already there. Even at that age, they considered me an OG. And um so uh I, I remember um you know, at 16, um, you know, I found out, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to have a kid, you know, whatever, when I'm 17. And, you know, most people, it would stop them or make them think, you know, hey, I'm going to have a kid change, you know, and that wasn't me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, this is this is my life. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna die in prison or I'm going to die out here and get killed. Yeah. That's what it is. I remember one time, Canal, I got shot at, um, I'm not literally, bro, like eight, 10 feet away by some gang that I would always stab up. Mm-hmm. I mean, they hated me. Right. And they knew I was fearless, bro. And and I remember um eight, ten feet away, like uh they had bandanas on their face, just like walking around like COVID now and all that. Yep. Back then, but you know how gangsters did. Yep. Yeah, and so they they pulled they pull their guns out. They had like four or five guns out of their windows, and they start shooting eight, ten feet away, can I? Mm. I dropped, I just dropped on my on the street and I got up and I was looking. Nothing. You know, see if I had bullet, bullet holes in me. I didn't have nothing. So I said, these bottles were shooting blanks. You know what I mean? So I started chasing them with a brick, bro, throwing at their car, throwing my gang up and stuff. Mm. You know, telling them West Side Locals, Jackies or whatever, and this and that. So even that, hey, bro, even, even in the, the midst, Even in the midst of all these life and death situations, nothing clicked in your head like, there has to be a God that loves me. Nah. You, you just kept thinking, man, hey, I'm just getting lucky. Or, or man, I, I really got... Like I can't I be just, stopped. I just start feeling like I'm untouchable. Like I can't be stopped. Like, That's how exactly. Yeah. That's how I felt. I, I felt like 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 um I had a death wish and mm. I didn't care. Man. And and I and I was so so depressed and so hurt and so wounded and and just had so much hate and anger in me that I could care less. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't just me. It was all my homeboys, bro. Man, and God's, you know, hand, just God's like, hand was on you this whole time. His love was on you even when you didn't want him. That's. Always. Man. Always. And now I see that. You know what I mean? And um, even my homeboys, bro, like um, like you were saying, uh, I, and I tell people this a lot too, like the devil will give you a fake dream. God's dream for your life is real. But I remember um, seeing a lot of homeboys. It starts out fun. You know what I mean? Oh, let's shoot a little nickel, a little yep. dime. And then it turns into a habit where you can't stop. Yep. And, 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 or, or like me, in my case, I wanted that power. Yeah. You know, to be a feared and, and thugged out, respected, hardcore gangster OG yeah. and, and do this time and still run stuff up in there, and you know, with drugs or without. And and, um, and, and where the system couldn't break me no matter what, even if I was in SEG, mm. that was my mindset. Yeah, I still did drugs and all that, but I was more like like a, a, an enforcer type homie. Yep. And, um, and but I seen these homies, bro. Like, just like you were saying a little bit earlier, like, they start off with very little, and it seems fun. Yeah. Like, oh, we're having fun, you know what I mean? They're taking a little bit of pills, smoking a little bit of pot. But that end result, for, for peeps that are watching right now on this show, let me tell you guys, man, I have homeboys that see behind dumpsters now. Mm. That one time had pockets full of money, shooting dough with the most beautiful women you would see were lowriders. Sleeping behind dumpsters. Wrapping themselves in plastic sometimes because they, they you know, because they can't keep warm. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of them dead. You know, a lot of them HIV, hepatitis C. You know, that's the devil's plan for everyone's life out there that's watching right now. Mm. You know, so, but but it starts fun, but it ends in destruction. It, man, and then you go to hell he wants, he to wants top it, it off. He wants it to look like, like man, this is this is it. But then in the end, it it's like, oh, man, I should have listened to instruction. Oh man, it's yeah. it, it's crazy how the enemy comes to just um kill, steal, and destroy. E- even at that age, man, glory to God who had His hand on you this whole time. Because and even now, knowing you and, and and why you're so passionate, it's the same thing with us. Uh, when you're when you when you're a servant for Satan for so long, yeah. And then the the veil comes off your eyes, like the, it says now the blind yeah. can see. You're like, hey, yeah. I, I, the, the soldier in you is still there, but now the energy is directed for the kingdom. Man, that's that's, that's a, right. That's amazing. Now that's now, right. That's go ahead, man. God. That's what I reckon. That's what I recognize in you too, Kanan. Because I was talking to to G, the homie I told you about, Gilbert Esquivel, that he's a secular comedian, but he's clean. He doesn't say no bad words in his jokes. Yo. And then he talks about God at the end. He's someone that I've been wanting to hook you up with. Amen. But but yeah, it, it's true, Kanan. You know what I mean? Um, 
But so you yeah, you, you already I mean, build up you, you build up your, you build up the street you you're getting the power. But now, now it's headed to the penitentiary because we all know in the streets, man. When you're doing crime, yeah. you got now you got to go do the time, right? So, so yeah. So as well, time, as, I ended as, up. Go ahead. Yeah, I ended up in um in, in the county jail. Um, I had robbed the house, and um, and I had duct taped the people up and stuff like that, and I had stole like five guns from them and I had them at gunpoint and stuff and um duct taped them. I took a pizza out, out their uh, refrigerator and I was laughing at them eating pizza, their pizza in front of them, cold pizza they had in the refrigerator. Mm. So I'm walking with all these guns, you know, uh, back to my grandma's house, gold, money, all types of stuff, and like a, a big shotgun down my dickies pants. And, you know, I don't know what else kind of guns. There was an old school gun and stuff like that. The cops stopped me, bro, you know, because how I look. And, and they're like, hey, what are you doing? I said, no, nah, nothing. They're like, hey, why are you in school? And I said, no, nah, you know, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going home. I live a few blocks away and, you know, whatever. And I was, I was telling them, you know, lies and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I'm just eating a, a pizza right here or whatever. Well, so the cops, you know, grabbed the pizza box, bro. They checked me. They're like, don't move. We're going to kill you. You know what I mean? And uh, out in Texas, you know, they ain't playing. You know, these cops ain't playing out here. Yeah. You know, they will kill you or beat you. Uh, real bad. It will happen to me multiple times in, um, in multiple fights with the law. But um, the, I got busted because of the pizza box. They had ordered it. They delivered it to them. I, their address was right on the pizza box. Oh, man. So, so, so this, I got busted three times with pizza, can I? <laughs> Which is crazy, right? And they, they would they would laugh when they would see me. They're like, "Man, homie, you crazy little dude." They're like, "You're you over here. You are getting busted eating pizza all the time. You must really like pizza, <laughs> you know." And uh, but I ended up in the county jail, can I? I, I? I was I went to a D home first. I was 16. I had so many charges that they charged me as an adult. Uh, so I, they ended up moving me to a rascal tanks, uh, which was on the second floor of the El Paso, uh, uh, Paso County jail. Uh, you know, the detention uh, center out here. And, um, this was in the nineties. Uh, so back then it was real bad, real bad. I, I mean, um, and it was a big difference from the detention home. The detention home, you still see stuff happen. There'll be fights, but there was like a little, you know, guard in there with you or whatever, taking care of you. Um, oh yeah, this the county, was a total... county and penitentiary. Now, now you're going up to the. It's a, it's another structure. It's a whole other. Yeah, structure. big yeah. time, big time. And so and so, um, I I went there and um. And uh, it it was so crazy, Canal. I mean, I was in these rascal tanks, and um, I did uh, I think like eight months in those rascal tanks for for stabbings, and then um, I did the time of the detention home before that. So I think like that time it was like a year I did, but I was in Sega a lot of the time for doing, you know, crazy stuff. I I, I ended up getting schooled uh, by, by homies in there. And then I started controlling stuff. I started controlling the tanks and stuff like that. Yeah. So I was the one, I was the one giving the rules, you know, don't put your hand over someone's food. Don't use a restroom while someone's eating, you know, you clean, right. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. And, and I live by those rules a hundred percent. You know, my uncle had taught me that since I was young too. So for them, that was a very big thing. So I just considered it normal already. Yeah. But I, I was the type of person, like, if you didn't um, shine your, you know, your, your metal toilet and, and little um, sink and, and, you know, mirror, mirror supposedly that it was a mirror that you can't even see through because it was so scraped up with, stainless, with gangster carvings st in it. Stainless steel? <laughs> yeah, stainless steel stuff, man. I would tell them, I want to see that so shiny that it looks like a mirror that you could see yourself in it. Mm. And if they wouldn't do it, bro, we would, would break their ribs. I'll break their ribs, mm. you know, and stuff like that. And then it'll get worse from there. You know, it was, it was crazy. You know, and now I look back and I think it's just so stupid. But um, I was in these rascal tanks. These rascal tanks were like half the size of a normal, um, I guess, uh, cell in a, a up on the upper stairs. This was like for the for the youngsters that were rascals, and we're the rowdiest ones in the whole county. We're the ones with the most to prove. Mm. And when I was in there, I seen um, I seen Bato get his head kicked through the through the iron um, doors and die. I seen another dude get uh, uh, toilet paper stuck in his mouth and beat to death. I seen Bato's hang other Bato's and and, and and you know then them um, act like it was a suicide. I seen Bato's get hot shots, you know what I mean, and act like it was like they were shooting dope and died in, up in yeah. there. You start, you start seeing the outcome, man. The, the older you get, the uh... 
even not even the older, the, just the deeper you get into it, just, the, yeah. out, the outcome is always is always destruction and death, man. The enemy doesn't have nothing good for any of us, man. He wants to see us nah. in a cell, isolated. He wants to see us depressed. He wants to see us give up where there's no hope. You know, he, he don't want us yeah. to, he wants us to die hating God, die with anger in our heart. And, and that's how he gets the glory on his end. But glory to God who, who can reach us even in the darkness, his light shines the brightest, man. Keep, keep telling Amen. me, man. Keep going, brother. Amen. So, um, from there I got out, I thought I was the hardest homie on earth. You mm. know, I thought I was the hardest, hardest homie out there. You know, like how we always think yep. when, when you, when you do some time and you're, you're, you're you know, your chest puffed out and stuff like that. And we're like, you know, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there to the big league. Yeah. So I get out, you know, um, I, I, my daughter was born. Um, uh, I seen her one day I got locked up. I didn't see her till she was, um, you know, already way bigger. Yeah. Then, then I get, uh, my ex pregnant again, bro. He, he was born. I see him one day. I get locked up that same day he was born mm. for other crazy stuff. Same, I was doing same pattern, man. Go, go. Father's, same pattern yeah, father's having baby and we're still kids ourselves and going in and yep same pattern yep. That's how i was with, with my first one at 19 man, uh, man yeah I, I knew i loved her i just didn't know how to love myself but i just i knew I exactly loved her. I didn't know how and didn't time get a little harder when you knew you had something out there like you start looking yeah. at it like man i got something to at least in the back of my head I, like i got something i want to live for i just don't know how to live for it you know what i mean yeah yeah, it does. I, I think I think we all do, even though we put a wall up, a front up. Oh, it's a front. No that, one likes doing time. You don't want to. You don't want to show show that side of emotion. But even on exactly. birthdays, on birthdays, we sketch up little little Winnie the Pooh cards and, and prison yeah, cards. Yeah, yeah. With the little with the little balloons with the caps and all that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> send it off. Send it yeah, off. Like the little did. sprinkles with the toothbrushes where you sprinkle them. Yeah. The coloring of the card. <laughs> Prison art. My baby yeah. still got my prison art, man. She always showed me my letters and stuff like that. She was like, "You remember this, Daddy?" Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I got, I got, I got all the art too, man. That I was sent panels and all that stuff. And uh, so yeah, canal, you know, um, um, I ended up getting a. I was supposed to do, do three months in a restitution center. I ended up getting a five year sentence from from only three months. I was supposed to do because mm. I was such a knucklehead. So I ended up going to pin. Yeah. And uh, when I got there, same thing. You know, I was taxing people, hurting people, you know, um, beating people, you know, um, all that. You know, um, I remember one time um, uh, some dude had to use a, the, the restroom, bro, real bad. And in my 50 pot dorm that I was in, um, I was controlling it. And I told him, hey, you're not going to use that restroom. You already know what it is, homie. You know the rules. And you know the routine, like where you write down what they're going to be doing. Someone's going to mop on a paper and stick it on the you know, the metal, the metal um, frames that they have, you know, structure in the prisons they have. Yeah. And I'll make all that, you know, hey, you're doing toilets, you're doing this, you're doing that, you know, and, um, you know, the rules, you know what I mean? Hey, you're not going to, you know, use a restroom while people are eating and stuff like that. Well, they, and that and th that place I was at, we'll eat in our dorm. Yeah, We'll go get our food and then go back to our dorm. And so he was like, man, I'm sick. I have to use a restroom. Why don't I tell him, if you use that restroom, homie, while we're eating, I'm going to stab you up. And, um, and I did. He had to use the restroom, man. He was just sick. I started stabbing him with a, with, you know, with a, with a with a sharp pencil or a piece of wood or something. I don't remember what it was. I think it was a pencil. Uh, I ended up in Seg. Um, I was in Seg uh, for, I think, uh, like a year and a month. Did they put your Bible in there? I know you get a book. Did you get your Did you get your Bible? Did you ever Did you ever look at the Bible while you was isolated or nah. by yourself? Nah, I and I was in so much trouble all the time that. What did you think about I the Christians? You know, what you think about the Christians in lockup? Because I remember that there was there, there was believers there. I just I didn't relate to them at the time, and I used I to. Didn't either. I, I used to be like, man, it, I, like in my head, the, the 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 lifestyle that I was living. If I agreed with that, it was weakness on this side. So I, exactly. couldn't, I couldn't just exactly. say, but it was something about them that attracted me. Because I remember they used to sing songs. I never forget they used to sing. Uh, the first time I heard Amazing Grace, and and when they sung it it did something inside of me. Like, like it was something that wanted to cry. So they used to have their Bible studies at the top tier. And while I, when it was shower time, I can hear them singing. And I literally, like after I come from the yard, I'd, I'd see they had Bible study and I knew they were going to sing. So I'd go to the shower and I'd just sit in the shower and I'd wait for them to sing that song. And I'd just listen to it. And bro, it did something to me. Like I wouldn't even, it was crazy because just hearing the, the words, amazing grace, 
like something and i like rap music i didn't like i didn't like country music i didn't like nothing but but yeah. murder music and rap so for me to hear these words yeah me it, too <laughs> it, it did something to me inside my soul was like my soul was like i it's something that that, that attracted me to that because i would literally just go take a shower just because just because I, I know from an ear when a close ear i could I hope they sing that song i hope they oh they're singing it yeah and something inside of me for that moment would just be it you know what I mean? Like that was that was yeah. I, I noticed it. I was like, but I couldn't agree. I couldn't tell the homies like, hey, I like when they sing that yeah, song. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it was, it was a different message uh, though. You, yeah, you know, um, I, 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 I'm gonna talk about that. I was already gonna talk about that. Now I didn't read my Bible. I didn't. I didn't want to know nothing about God. Mm, you were still. Uh, you you know, were still hate, I, hateful. I was more hateful than ever, bro. And I was insane. I was more more mad than ever. More hateful than ever. And, um, and in my mindset, I was, I, I would always think like inside those cells, like, you know, the, the guards, I would never let them, I would never let them see any weakness from me. And, and I would tell them, I, I ain't going to break. You're going to break before I break. You were hurt. And, um, man, you were hurt, bro. Yeah. You were, yeah, so, big you time. were so hurt that you were so angry, man. And, and when I'm preaching, yeah, when, I'm, when we preach on death row and I'm preaching to killers and bro, and I, I see the, I see that look that, that, that demon that, that, that used to be inside of me. When I when I yeah. when I look into their souls, they're you're hurt, Kana. You were just hurt, man. Yeah. And, and and it's hard to, it's it's hard to admit you're hurt because you're so angry. You're like, why me? Like why? You know what I mean? Like when you go back to the root yeah. of it, the root of your hurt, it goes back to when you were yeah. nine years old. It goes back to when, yeah. when pops were with Thea, like when they took off. And yeah. why, why can't why did, why can't we be a family? And all of a sudden, all of that is inside that pain, and the enemies put put bondage at the darkness at the darkness and all of a sudden he done patted it down where just leave it buried the enemy said just leave it buried I, i'm gonna build you i'm gonna build you another mountain of of evil you know what i mean but glory to yeah. jesus who with the blood can cleanse you bro glory to yeah, jesus who, that's right who, who go that's break right. that, the covenants that we make with the devil like he just the blood of jesus Amen. breaks every covenant bro ain't that crazy yeah, like that blood right. it just doesn't cover your sins it it washes it away like like if you wrote it on a chalkboard and then you erase it bro like when the blood of jesus like and brother and you know what's beautiful about it uh uh blanca <laughs> is that when he forgives you he forgets bro like it's yeah. hard. We we don't have to forget. He didn't give us the power to forget. <laughs> but his love for you is like I forget. Like like yeah. you, like you've done no more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like man, that type you, of you that type of love is amazing, bro. It is. You know. You know. It's so funny, Canal is. Just what you touched on right there. I'm gonna talk about that right now a little bit. Uh, in a little bit. Just with a little bit of sermon I'm gonna preach. Not long, but it has to do with that. So you touched right on it. So that's even confirmation for me. <laughs> so, so, check, so let's do this, cause, cause, uh, I know, I know a lot of people, man. We, we don't really, uh, we, there's no time limit though. But a lot of people are saying, tell us about the change more. So I, I, we know the war yeah. stories. We can go into the blood yeah, details. Yeah. Like when, yeah. when, when is something? That's what I'm gonna do. When does something start pulling on you? Like, oh, like what is this? Is something's happening inside yeah. of me? What, what happened? Yeah, that's what I'm. That's where I was getting to. Um, every three, like, um. I didn't, I wasn't able to get a uh, commissary, none of that stuff. I was eating Johnny Sacks, you know, what they give you when you're locked down. And uh, the, the bologna was so green. It was like rubber, kind of like you could shake it and it wouldn't tear. I remember and, those. And, yeah. And I, I, after a year, I was sick of eating those, you know what I mean? And I had some homies once in a while come by and pass a little M&M or something. Like, what are they going to eat or whatever? And I'm like, all right, cool. And, you know, but um, they would try to get me to go to church. Like every three months, six months, you know, nine months. Hey, hold on, hold on. You know, before you even like, go, to, before you even go to the church, did you? When did you start? Was it now or after? Did you start noticing that the lifestyle that we live was fake? Like, and I'm saying that we were fake, but we were fake because we believed the deception. Yeah. When did you start noticing, like, man, uh, this thing will kill me? Like, they don't care about me. Always, there, there's no honor amongst the uh, den of thieves. Like, there's no honor in the thieves. You know what I mean? Like, you, nah. you're, you're next. You get to the top just to be. Take it yeah. out, you know what I mean? When did you notice I, that? I, I always knew. I always knew since I was young, but I just figured, like, look, this is the lifestyle we chose. This is where we live. That's how it is. Yeah. That's how it rolls. Yeah, okay. You know? So so it's sad, but I, I, I always knew. But I just, that's, I didn't have, I didn't have, my my love had just turned to hate, you know? So I just didn't care anymore. So the canal is um, saying, let's go to church? Yeah, well, they they, they come, uh, like, like every um, three, six, Nine months, you know, the guards will come and be like, hey, Blancas, you know, I call you your last name. You want to go to church? And I'll be like, nah, Charlie, homie, I don't want to go, you know. And 
And uh, six months passed by, hey, you want to go to church? Charlie, homie, I don't want to go. And, you know, I was in there doing my, my workout stuff and all that. And, and um, you know, after nine months, they're like, hey, you want to go to church? I'm like, nah, Charlie. So I think it was like 11 months to like a year and a month where I actually went to the church. Mm. I, w I walk in and I didn't go because I, w I wanted God. Yeah. I just went to get out of that room, that seg room for a while. <laughs> yeah. 23 hour a day lockdown. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? With one hour shower. So I just want to get out. So so when I go into this um, you know, where the where, where the church was and the chaplain was and all that, her name's Gina Montes. Mm -hmm. She's actually part of the gangs gangs for Jesus squad now, you know, that my, my show I have, you know, that we, we we're doing stuff. And uh, anyway, so I walk in, I see Gina. And, and I see these, the, the homies, the, the, the Christian dudes, they're all pointing at me. And um, she told me later on that they, because when I walked in, I was bigger than I am now. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty big, but I had like 23 inch arms. I was, I was a big homie, you know, uh, stocky, big. Yeah. Um, and I remember I walk in, they all, they all put their heads down. They were scared of me, but she told me later that she said, you know what, what, what they were telling me? I said, what? that you're the one that beats them and that takes their food and that takes their commentary and taxes them cigarettes and all their drugs or whatever, you know, stuff like that or whatever. You know, you're the dude that does all that. Man. They don't have control stuff up in here. And so I was like, oh, I was like, oh, okay. And, you know, so I walk in, I sit down, bro. I'm not trying to hear nothing, yep. you know? And actually I was going to go to mock her because I used to mock, uh, this, this is going to answer the question you're asking me earlier. I used to mock all Christians and all preachers that would come try to visit me and talk to me about God. Yeah. Cause since I was young, I had seen all these dudes use the Bible from the detention home. And then I'll see them in the street shooting dope or smoking weed or snorting coke and doing all that. And I remember I would slap those dudes mm -hmm. and tell them if I ever see you again locked up, I'm going to stab you for being a fake. For being a fake. So if yeah. you're going to live this, Live this. That's crazy. We didn't, we didn't respect that even then. Like, if you better, if nah. you tell me you living for the for, for God, you better be living for God. Yeah, if you better not, be you, doing it. Yeah, if not, you hiding behind the cross because you're scared. And that's one thing that nobody yeah. respects, man. Even Jesus says, even God says, you can't be lukewarm. I'll spit yeah. you out my mouth. I'll spit you out. Spit you yeah. out. Okay, that's now right. what? So what happened? Uh, what, the, 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 so, what did she preach about when you went in there? Bro, this is crazy. I mean, I, I go in, right? I, I'm, I fold my arms like this. And I'm sitting there, <laughs> you know, acting hard. Yeah. And 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 I, and I was hard. I mean, I was a hard-hearted person. Yeah, hard-hearted, yeah. And and and, uh, and every, up to that point, uh, every preacher that I had seen, I would tell the preachers, um, well, what do you know about my life? Mm. Have you seen someone's brains all over you from getting shot, your homeboys? Yeah. Have you seen your homeboys shoot up and die? Yeah. Have you stabbed someone? Have you tortured someone? Have you killed someone? Yeah. Have you been locked up? Did you have a mommy and daddy? Did you have a silver spoon in your mouth? Yeah. Do you have a GED, a high school diploma? Did you go to college? And they would always say yeah to something. And I'll say, then get out of here, man, because you can't relate to me. Yeah. So get out of here. Go go talk to someone. Go tell your uh, your, your stuff about this Jesus character or someone else, homie, because yeah. I don't believe you. Yeah. You guys are fakes. You guys are punks. And I, you know, and, and and I would always do that to them. They was they would shut up because they couldn't say nothing. Yeah. With Gina, I didn't get that chance. What she do? You know, she she came right up to my face, bro, like <laughs> this close to my face. Come on. And all I re all I remember is spit flying all over my face. What she say? Now she calls it, yeah. She, now she calls it holy spit. <laughs> but she she's going off. She's like, are you wet on? I'm like, yeah, wet on. I was with my arms crossed. Like, yeah, I'm the hardcore homie. You know what I mean? And she starts spitting all over my face. And the first thing she tells me is, you down to die, wet on? And I'm like, yeah, I'm down to die. And she's like, well, I'm down, I'm down to die too. But for God's gang in Cuba. And she was in my face like that, bro. She was from L.A. You know, where, she lives where out you here think, now. What were you thinking? You are like, what, who is this? I, I thought she was crazy. <laughs> I said, this lady this lady's crazy. You know, I didn't even have time to mess with her. Because she got in my face and started spitting in my face. But one thing that I respected was that she was down to die for something, but it was something good. And I was down to die for something, but it was something bad. So you see, I've, I've always respected in this world has always respected people that were, that died for their cause, whether it was Che Guevara or Martin Luther King or whoever you want to name, but they remember those people because they died for something, you know, for their cause. And so I always respected people that were like that. So, so with Gina, when she was preaching to me, you know, she started telling me her testimony 
and her ex-husband had left her for a 13 year old wow when she moved out to texas mm. and so she had this hardcore testimony too so i couldn't tell her like hey you don't know what's up with, with, with something being hard mm. or you know going through a hard time so it messed with me it messed with me I, I, I left. I went back to my to my sex. I told me take take me back to my you know myself or whatever. Like I, you know, I don't want to hear no more of this. And, but you know, it says in the Bible, bro, that the that the word is like a double edged sword. Yeah, it pierces. And it's it like pierce. it was it was it was like hitting me. Penetrates Since the, the marrow, the the soul, spirit and soul. And oh. Yeah. Yep. Good. Yep. So hey, so you went back and, and so that I, night you couldn't you it was in your it was it was on your thought, right? In your it mind. Was with me since that since that time she said all that. Mm, because man. she was real. She was a real deal. Shout out to Sister Gina, man, for real. What's up, man? Yeah. Pastor yeah. Gina, and, man. And, yeah. And you know one thing that tripped me out kind of big time too is that she I saw a true love in her. This bottle shot up and died in the pen I was at. And and you know, to me, I was like, who cares? You know what I mean? That's that's what comes with it. You want to live that? This is what this is what it is. Yeah. So I was like, you know, whatever, man. I've been seeing that my whole life. You know, what I mean, it didn't phase me none. You know, I, I could I could stab someone up real bad and go eat a sandwich with blood all over my shoes with my hands like nothing. What did she do? You know, so I was cold hearted. What did she I always tell the brothers, man? She, it's the love. It's love that 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 impresses us. Man, you have a heart and heart. Broke. Cause we never yeah. seen that type of love. That type of love is nah. That's that. That's that love that that, that softens the, the heart of a criminal. That's, yeah. That's that love. What What did she it, do? It tripped me out because this is what she did, bro. She started crying, like hysterically, and she was banging on on the on the metal door with the little windows, mm -hmm. and telling the guards, "Open it. Let me go pray for this this dude." Mm. And um, she goes over there and she's crying, bro, mm. hugging this dude. And you're watching it, praying for him. I've seen this. And, and I was just like, man, this lady really cares. Mm, come on. This lady really cares. Come on, brother. And and, and that messed with me even more. Mm. So when I went back uh, to my to my sex, I was thinking, thinking. How can she love? Like, and, how can she care so much for the, for these people, right? And I yeah. Was thinking, like, how can she care so much? Why does she care so much? Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, so I go back again, bro. It, it, she was like hooking me. It was God hooking me through her. You at that man? That's crazy. You went back again because of that act of love. Yeah, mm, and because of her spitting in my face, <laughs> <laughs> that holy spit. <laughs> and so, so I go back, and right away she would tune in on me. Mm. And those Christians dudes, I would slap them and beat them with phones and stuff like that. So they didn't, you know, they were, they were scared of me. And they were like, "This dude's never gonna change. You're you're working on someone that's not, never gonna change." And Gina herself told me one time. She said, what do I told God one day? God, I give you what because he's crazy mm. and only you can change him. Come on, come on. And so, so, so I get there and um, she starts going off on me again. She would always own in on me. Going off, man, preaching the gospel, talking about this and that, and that Jesus died on this on this tree. And I'm like, well, what do you mean a tree? I didn't even understand what that meant. I said, you're talking about, I thought he died on a cross, my grandma said. You know, so you, well, what do you mean a tree? And she's like, well, a cross is made out of a tree. You know what I mean? So I didn't understand nothing. Yeah. Because I, I never really want to hear it, you know what I mean? And um, like, what do you mean a tree? I heard it was a cross. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, it was crazy, bro, because then I went back to my, my sex cell again it made me think even more because she was telling me, well, God loves you. Mm. God has a plan for your life. Come on. God can touch you and change you. Yeah. God can, God can do something great with you. And I was thinking in my, in, in, in saying, you know, man, is, is there really a God that can do this? Mm. Come on. Here we go. Is there really a God that can do this? And I said, you know, and 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 if there is, will, will he forgive everything that I've done? Because I've done some bad stuff. Bro, that was me, bro. And 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 so, um, you know, I, I had made my mind up that then I went, I went back to church again. I see Gina, and she tells me, well, she was going off on me again. This time, I said, look, Gina, I said, um, you've touched me, and um, and you're real. Hmm. And I said, and 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 I and I and I gotta admit that you're real. Come and on. I, and I told her, you know what? I said, um, all I know is selling dope, gang banging, drug dealing, uh, you know, womanizing, you know, being locked up. That's my life. I had accepted this. 
and I and, and I was the type of knucklehead. I told her that I was willing to die in a safe prison cell for the rest of my life or be dead in the streets. Mm. The kind of person I am. And I said, but but ever since you I first met you, it just messed with me. It just messed with me. I I couldn't shake it. And I said, so look, if this God that you're talking about is real, come on. And he really loves me and he could do something with this broken, messed up life. Mm. I said, then here I am, Gina, and I put my hands out. Here I am. And she said, repeat this prayer after me. Well, and I repeated the, the sinner's prayer. You know what I mean? The salvation prayer. And, and my life has never been the same since, Kana. Because you meant what you, you know, said. God. You meant what you said, bro. I, yeah, you know it was you, like a Paul conversion. It was like that. Bro, you know what? I said the uh, sinner prayer so many times and I just said it because they said you'll be saved. But when I meant what I said it, when... When I, I remember saying exactly when I listened to you, when I when I told God, Lord, if you can forgive me for every corrupt, destructive, perverted, murderous, wicked thing that I've done, if you can forgive me, if there if this is really true and you got what I need and I don't gotta go nowhere else, then hook me up, give it, Lord. And you know what? My words saying what I mean, meaning when I say, I never been the same since. So when I hear this, I relate to that because I was thinking the same thing. Like, is this real? And can you love me like that? I know. Because like, they talked about a father's I love. Know. And I missed, I, like, I didn't have my dad for, for years. Like, my dad, he, he was he was a good man. He just, you know, when him and mom parted, he went and raised another family. So for, for a cer certain time, he wasn't there for me. So the streets was there for me. And bless my mama's yeah, heart. Yeah, exactly. My mama did the best she could do that, that, at that time. Like, but... I needed something and I didn't have it. And I remember when they talked yeah. about a father's love, I was like, well, I don't know what really what that is. Like my dad gone. Like what's the father's love? Like, I don't know that. So when I remember being one-on-one -on -one with God and saying, if, if there really is, if I really do have a heavenly father and, and, and you, there's, so, there's something in you that you can give me, which is forgiveness, Lord. Cause I feel like dirt. I feel terrible. God, I think things that are evil. Like I'm, I know I'm possessed with, with demonic spirits. Like, like save me, I you me. Like I need you right now, and if it's real, give it to me, cause I, cause I was ready for something different because I knew I was empty and yeah. dead. And but you know what, I was never the same, bro. And you you know what's crazy, Blanca, yeah. is that when that touched me, my brother wasn't saved. And I remember I I just shot my twin, bro. I was a shooter at 19. I shot my cuate, bro. That's how demonic I was. Like I was on pills and and like and and that's what the, the enemy does. He make you hurt the people that you love the most. So after I shot him, I wanted to shoot myself on my head. And God saved me. Yeah. I never forget. But I I never forget when God when I when I said that prayer and I meant it for the first time. Like like I used to meant. And it's crazy because in in prison. I, the only the, my first time I heard the gospel was when these older white dudes would come preach. And guess what? I used to just get yeah. out my cell just to go eat their snacks because they brought little little yeah. <laughs> they brought little, they brought little juices and little yeah. cookie snacks. Yeah. And so I go over there with some with some tobacco. Yeah, they would sneak them in, huh? Yeah, so I go over there, make a tobacco sale, and eat their <laughs> snacks. And I and I had to sit there yeah. and listen to their gospel. Yeah. But I remember, <laughs> yeah. I remember when, when God did something to me. I went, I ran, I, I knew something happened, and I I ran into the hotel hotel room. And my brother, he just got shot. He was on his crutches. He had marijuana bumping women around him. And he looked at me and I said, bro, Jesus is real. And he said, get out of here. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, bro. I was like, because he was my twin. Like, we were like this, bro. Yeah. And I just hurt the closest yeah. person that I love on earth. And now I wanted yeah. to kill myself. And then all of a sudden, something can't happen to me. And I wanted to share it with him. Like, bro. Like, and he was like, get out of here. But then when he, yeah. got, when he got saved, he told me. He said, bro, God is real. I said, I know. I told you. And then right then and I there. Know. Being double minded because I didn't get discipled either. I didn't get discipled. Yeah. You know how you know how discipleship is very important. Man, we let very the streets, important. we let the OGs disciple us. Why wouldn't we let God That's right. we, you know? I'm big on that now because for 10 years I was double minded. Me too. My brother, yeah. my brother bounced me right back into where I, where I was supposed to be. And he started reminding me, like, yeah. hey, 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 like tighten up, bro. Like God, God wants soldiers. He don't want no no ha ha half stepping uh criminal. Like like if you're gonna exactly. go, if you're gonna come to this side, you gonna have to be sold out. And I, I started getting it. Like you right, man. What what am I doing? Like I believe in him, but I'm not living for him. Like I know him as savior, yeah. but he's not Lord and master of my life. Like I started tightening yeah. up, bro. Like I started letting go of the music, my yeah. brothers, and it was easy for me to grow like that. But yeah. I let I let church rules uh hurt me. I let church people like I was just religious. Like, yup, religious, Religion. bro. They put yeah, chains. Look, I, I took, know. God took the chains off me, and then they put chains right back on me, and I was like, oh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Hey, That's but, why me and you are so different, and we're so effective, Kana. Uh, but, but listen, I didn't mean to interrupt you. So, so you say the prayer, and you meant it. What happened? Right? What happened in your heart? Like, did you just leave the gang after that, or, or like, how was the transition? I, I had. I had uh, beaten a guard up, right? And then in TDC, they give you five years for beating guards up automatic. Yep. No matter what. 
Yo, a song. And I had so many write-ups. I mean, it was ridiculous, bro. I mean, my 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 uh, before I got sentenced to to the you know to the five years, and I was on the old law, so I had to do half, you know, my well no matter what. Yeah. Um, but I remember when I went to court, my 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 record what was already so big, it looked like a phone book. And I remember I was shackled up in orange because you know orange is a felon color, like the worst ones. Yeah. And and, I, and we're all shackled chain, and, and the homies were looking at me and they're like, and I was laughing. I was like, I wonder whose whose phone book that is. And then they call me, Blancas, come up here, the judge. So that's how big my record was. Yeah. I had write ups, crazy write ups up in there, you know. And, and in there, you're always guilty. Where the corporal, sergeants, all them dudes, yeah. you're guilty no matter what. Yeah. You're supposed they tell you bring someone that you're guilty. Yeah, you're guilty. And, and so I didn't even charge. care. Yep. Yeah, I didn't care. I was like, whatever, man. Give me whatever time you want. And, you know, I was a knucklehead, bro. I went from do- getting three months at restitution center to getting a five year sentence. So I didn't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was my that was my mindset. And um, what happened, man, is a warden saw the change in me, and all the guards did. They like, let me out of say. Your heart started softening up. You started it like that. When did, when did you pick the book up though to start? Like when when you're like, let me Bro, see, what this, let me see what this Bible talking about. I didn't, I didn't understand the Bible. Oh man! So what was... happened is I got, I got out of of, of of seg because they saw the change in me and they told me, we're gonna let you out, and we're gonna we're gonna send you a halfway house to an ISF. I couldn't believe it. That's mm. when I was like, man, God's real. Mm. I already knew God was working, and and so I go back to a dorm right. And I told Gina well, the next time church was, I said, I don't understand the Bible, Gina. Hmm. And I said, oh, can you bring me a kid Bible with pictures on it? And uh, she's like, yeah. So I started I started reading that, bro, in the dorm. Hmm. A kid Bible hey, with pictures hey, on it. Yeah, things that you can understand, bro. Like, yeah. Hey, when, when, hey, bro, yeah. When, when, people, when people, man, divide Bible studies and, and they start arguing about, well, this is the King James. And, bro, I said, hey, I got vatos in the pen that they can't read. Like, they can't read thousand dudes. They, they read what they can read. And you know what? God works in their life yeah. because they you know they hunger and they thirst for righteousness and God yeah. fills them. So when you come to me with all yeah. these theologies and, and, and yes, I know yeah. King James is a, is a more accurate scripture. But when you start saying yes. this is the only thing that can help you change, that's a lie. Because when you nah. hunger and thirst for righteousness, these vatos yeah. are changing because it's something that yeah, God, exactly. God can relate to so when you say that i know how real my god yeah. is Ooh. exactly exactly can i you know um uh the crazy thing is is i, I would read the, the the kid bible right but you were, the, you were understanding it you was understanding it. yeah i was i was understanding it but the dudes bro they would look at me and they're like hey what are you you really reading your bible and i'm like i'm like yeah and they're, they're like you're reading a kid bible and i'll be like yeah well what's up okay? <laughs> they, they, they were scared <laughs> They were scared. They didn't want to say nothing. Yeah, this is my you kid, Bible. What, you, you, you don't like that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, what's up for what? I mean, like, no, no, yes, cool. this is my kid, Bible. <laughs> what's wrong with it? Oh, man, I feel you, bro. <laughs> so I get out, right? Yeah. I get out. I'm 22 years old. Um, I'd already done a lot of time behind bars. Mm-hmm. Half my life. Something's um, new inside your heart, right? Something's new. Everything. Everything. You're looking at life different. I mean, I big time. Mm. I changed. I mean, it was it was an apostle Paul type change. Like for me, I never slipped back or nothing like that. Come on. I, I was just that type of dude. Like either hey, you're gonna you ride for this or you ride for that. Yeah. If not to me, you're a punk. Yeah. You know what I mean, you ain't no soldier. You know, and 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 I tell I tell people in churches a lot of times because they tell me, and I and yeah, I know it's good, right? But they tell me we go to church and then we go home. I'm like, okay, but what else are you doing for God? Yeah. What else are you doing for God? Are you being light? Are you being salt to the earth? Are you shining? Yeah. Or is that all you're doing? And they'll tell me, oh, that's all we're doing. I tell them, all right, look, man. Well, you, uh, you, well, you, uh, know you know what? what? The difference between soldados like like you and someone who, yeah. who, who doesn't see the urgency is you've been forgiven for much, bro. So exactly. When, you, when you've been forgiven for much, you, you begin to love much and the, and and you're very you're you're a radical. You're like a big fish. Yeah, you're, exactly. You're, you're a big fish that, that got caught. And uh so so you you you're still a soldier. You're passionate, you're you're gonna be out there even exactly. harder. And some some people ain't, ain't ain't built for that. And that's and I've learned not to let that yeah. bother me. Like they're not doing their job because yeah. you know what? Some there's yeah. different tools. God says I have different tools, yeah. some use for greater purposes. And I and nobody's better mm-hmm. than nobody. You know what I mean? It just yeah, I know. You're, you're the type of you're the type of tool that gotta send into the deeper darkness. 
because there's yeah. there's other blancas, there's other trejos out there that only you yeah, can exactly. reach. There's only like you said, some of these other people they just can't reach it, and it's okay because they got people that we yeah. can't reach. There's people that I can't yeah. reach on that side, but God exactly. has, God has designed you for the trenches. God has designed you for the for the exactly. street blocks. God has designed you for the prison cells. Like God says, this is my vessel that I'm gonna use in this region. And and man, yeah. glory to God who who will clean. So what happens? You out. Hey, are you connected to the to, yeah. the, to the church or 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 the homeboy still yeah, coming around? Yeah. Like, yeah, no, I, I go to I go to the uh, uh, the biggest church that was out here, at, um, and um, I was like, I want to go to biggest baddest church and, and get down with God hardcore. Yeah, and so I start getting my word like, and I still get the word like that because you know the the way the times are, I believe we're in end times, and so I don't know when, man. I know a lot of churches are shutting down. So this is the only reason I say that, man, is like you have to learn how to transition if times are changing and things are shifting Yeah. where you're still effective and you're still going to touch people for the glory of God. So that's why I tell them, open your spiritual eyes, open your spiritual ears, listen to what God's telling you, listen to listen to what, what, what the Spirit's telling you. Mm. Because these are times that things are shifting and if churches shut down, a lot of these bottles ain't going to know how to do it, bro. And they're going to get mad at people like us who are jealous when they shouldn't. Yeah. I'm not jealous or mad at them. I'm just trying to open their eyes too. I preach from pulpits too. You do too. I know we do. Yeah. You know, so I do that too. I've preached at, at mega churches, Canal too. I know you have too. We've preached at same places, me and you. Yeah. At uh, same places. And so, so it, it's it's not that that I'm throwing stones or rocks. You know, that it's the times we're in, Canal. Yeah. And 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 I really do believe that that everyone has to shine and, 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 and even, I mean, just be different. Even if you see a homeless dude or something like that, man, stop and show some love, man. Stop and show some love. Yeah. Let them know that, that your God can touch their lives and change them. Yeah. There's a saying, you know? there's a saying that I love. It says, I would rather sit with the broken than to stand with the great. You know what I mean? Like I'd rather, yeah. I'd rather sit down with, with those who, who most people would just pass by and be like, I don't want to deal with him. Exactly. And I, that's, that's, that's why we're, that's why we're different. And, um, you know, well, now I get back to the question, but I, I get out. Um, yeah, I went back to my hood and I, and I wanted to see bro, but I had, I, what I did is I locked myself down for a year straight, mm. uh, on my own, uh, um, like lockdown, like in the word, like seven, eight hours a day, bro, Come getting on. strong, rooted in God. Uh, then I knew my work good. Yeah. Then I was like, I'm ready, God. Let's go hit this devil. Mm. Let's go take this territory back from the enemy's camp. Oh. And 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 uh, so so I start doing that. But I go to my hood, see all the homies in there. I have a homeboy in my book uh, from Jack. He's tiny. Uh, he's done like good 15, 17 years uh, too. He's he's probably five, six years younger. Than hey, me. what did they say though? I know they heard. They're like, man, what, what, man, where do not they tripped out? Where do save because they're. they're yeah, no, well, they didn't, you know, I get there, they have youngsters there, homie, they, you know, they're, they're, they're tatting them out on their faces, putting West Side on their faces and yeah. all this stuff, and, and our gang on their neck, and, you know, Tiny was tatting all these homies up. They're youngsters, making them do the beer run, same stuff, they, you know, you know, generational, you and, know, and when in you the seen hoods. Them, when you're seeing them, your heart went to, went out to them, like, you, it, it reminded you of you, right? Yeah, like, mm. yeah. Well, 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 the thing is, is I, I schooled Tiny. Yeah. I mean, I was the one that, I was the one that schooled him. So, and, and all of them had respect for me, even the old schoolers, yeah. because they're like, this dude will stab you in your neck. You yeah. know what I mean? So they respected me, yeah. you know, because they knew I wasn't no joke. So, so, um, and um, I see Tiny with these youngsters, bro. And um, he sees me and he's like, hey, this is crazy. What are right here? He's one of the craziest homies in the hood. And, and this and that. And he's like, tell him what's up. What I'm like, all right. And then he was like, show him your tattoos. And I was like, all right, I'll show him some tattoos, PBJ, Westside Locals. I have on my arms and my back and stuff. And so I show him and, and I'll show him my finger too. And I said, let me tell you guys something, man. If you guys don't change and give your life to Jesus Christ, <laughs> you're gonna go to prison. <laughs> and so, so I tiny. Bet, I bet they looked at you like, what the heck? <laughs> no, no. Well, tiny, bro. Oh, wait, tiny looks at me and he was like, nah, for real, what? Well, tell him the truth. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you some more truth. I said, Jesus loves all you guys, man. I love you guys too. I don't wanna see Bill down that road. <laughs> He like no no okay, no for bro. real man quit playing with him tell him the truth you keep giving him Jesus yeah yeah so then he pulls me to the side he's like hey what can I talk to you over here on the side like yeah what can we talk to him I said hey Tiny I just want to tell you I love you Kanan that 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 God bless you you know and I want to share Jesus with you and he was like look what on he's like you know we all got 
the utmost respect for you, Kanan. We all do. You're always a real deal. You're always down to the fullest. So we always respect you. You're always welcome here. Yeah. He says, but but I just, I'm going to keep gang banging and selling dope and doing what I'm doing. You know what I mean? And I said, all right, Kanan. I said, well, if you ever want, want to change, if you ever want God, I'm here for you. Yeah. And I love you. And Jesus loves you, Kanan. And, and he was like, all right, well, and I shook his hand and hugged him. And that's the last time I seen him until a little bit ago. And he was on house arrest. He's, he's, he's still in the pen right now. Mm. And um, and then I went down to a, 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 a apartment where a, a lot of old schoolers had got out, yeah. ranging from um, from their 20s to like their 60s. And um, all of us been done time, you know, and we were all there. I was with, with all of us. All of us considered hardcore homies. They were talking about bombing a cop's car and house because of something he had did or whatever. So that's actually what they're going to do. And they're going to go attack an enemy gang. And I was always the first one to be like, let's, let's go right now. Let's go right now. Whatever. Get all amped up and crazy, you know, and then let's go, let's go show them what's up. And, um, it's crazy, bro, because when I was there, I was seeing them pass weed around. They're shooting dope. They're doing their own stuff. And, um, I, at the age of, um, 18, um, 19, before I got locked up the last time, I was snorting like an ounce of cocaine a day. I was drinking like a gallon of tequila or vodka a day. I was throwing blood up, bro, at mm. the age of 19 in bars, straight blood all over the toilets, and I'll keep partying. I didn't care. Yeah. And, and so when so they knew I loved alcohol. And my homeboy comes up to me, he's like, hey, well, I tell Akana. And he, he passed me a, you know, some a drink. And I was like, nah, I don't want it. I wanted to see if, if if I wanted that lifestyle anymore. And and I was with all these hardcore homies with dudes I loved, you know, and uh, and I and I just I just knew. I said, man, God, you really changed my life. Mm. And I want what I really wanted to do was preach to them. But the thing was that they were so messed up, bro, that I'm like, they're not even gonna remember what I'm telling them. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they were gone, bro. You know what I mean? So so I told them, hey, you know what? I'll see you guys later, homie. And, they, and when I first walked in, they were like, we knew you were gonna come back well to the hood. We knew we heard you had got out, you know, and this and that. And I was like, all right. Another thing is that a lot of homies that were locked up in different pins in, in Sanchez in El Paso, uh, there was like uh, 12 homies from my hood there. Yeah. All riding with the same organized crime, um, you know, family or whatever. And um, some dude came up to them and told them, hey, your homeboy Huero is an hermano. And they're like, yeah, Simon, carnal. And they're like, no, no, no. Hermano, like he's serving God. Hermano de Jesus, and baby. Oh. Yeah. And, and they're like, they, he, they, they told me they all started laughing. And they looked at him and said, you don't know Huero. He's worse than us, homie. He's worse than us. And um, I got to see all of them and preach to all of them. But that day, I remember I left and I said, I'm never coming back, God. And this is to preach the gospel. But I, I knew I didn't want that life no more. So then I go looking for Gina, can I? Mm. I go to a church she's at. And uh, she told me she should go to a church. And so I go to the church and uh, and I see her. And she's going off, bro, on someone like she was, at, you know, just to me. She just like that. Somebody. She like... <laughs> She's a straight soldier like us, can I? Yeah. Straight up. Straight up soldier. Look. She don't care. She's been she's been to Juarez with me where heads are chopped off. I mean, on the road side of the road, she's been everywhere with me. Mm. She could care less. If I if I would call her and tell her right now, hey Gina, let's go hit the streets right now in Juarez at nighttime, she'll be like, let's go right now. Like that. That's how she is. Yeah. You know, straight soldier. Ready, ready. Yeah, ready, soldier, woman, warrior, you know what I mean? Yes. And so I see her and I tap on her shoulder and she turns around and and uh She's like, Wero, and I said, yeah, it's me, it's Wero. And she was telling me, she saw me smiling, bro, for the first time. I would never smile. I, I was always, I always had a lot of hate, yeah. real hard-hearted, never smile. Um, and if it was like my own girl said it was fake, you know, and uh, she saw me smiling, she looked at me, and she told me, you're preaching, aren't you, Wero? Come on. And I said, yeah, I said, yeah, Gina, I'm preaching the gospel. She started crying, bro. Tears started running down her eyes. And um, and she and, and she was telling me, she was saying, God, forgive me. She raised her hands right there in the church and just saying, God, forgive me. She said, because you know what, well, I've been telling God. I've been going to prisons and asking God, where's my fruit? I've been preaching to everyone and no one's changing. And she said, and you were the worst one, Wero. You were the worst. And she says, and look at you, 
you're preaching the gospel and she was crying, bro. Thank you, Jesus. And I said, man, praise God. You know what I mean? And and now since I've done so much and I've, I've hit the devil so hard, she tells me when we get together all the time, she says, um, I, I tell God now, just give me one more wedo, God. Just give me one more wedo. <laughs> you know? Oh. Yeah, just give me one more wedo. So so it's amazing, Canal, you know what I mean? And 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 God's so good. Like like from there, stuff has got so great. Like um, you know, I, I got a, a, a book out right now. I got my YouTube channel, I got my my Facebook and uh, a Gangster for Jesus show I do, uh documentaries on my YouTube. Uh, we're already the second episode's already coming out. Uh, we're we're gonna be working on a movie this year about my life. Amen. I mean, I I never dreamed in my wildest dreams that God would be doing this, and I think you can relate, Kana, because of everything you do. And I love your music, Kana. By the way, I love it. I bump it every day, Kana. Amen. And um, uh, it's straight up soldier music. Like to me, it's like Tupac, but for God. You know what I mean? Like gangster. <laughs> you know, I love it. I bump that. I'm gonna bump it right now, even after the show, Kana. <laughs> for real. And um, Amen. but. But you know, um, God's so good, bro. And I remember Gina told me when, when, when in prison, well, one day um, you're gonna have a book out, mm -hmm. and they're gonna make a movie about your life. And I started laughing, bro. And I told her, I, I said, okay, Gina. I said in my head, I was like, this lady, she's really crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I said this lady, she's crazy. She's like, she lost her top. You know what I mean? I said, yeah, okay. I, you know, I'll accept this Jesus guy and all that, but I think she's just crazy now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Thinking I want to have a book and stuff like that. That's just crazy. You know, so um, I, I just want to give some scriptures real quick, and now that's cool. Yeah, man. But and, 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 I see some questions, man. People uh, are saying, okay, yeah, yeah. People are saying, okay. how can they bless this man's ministry? I want y'all to go, um, go get his book. Be a blessing to him, man. Um, get yeah, a book. Amen. Now, just don't buy one book. Buy two books. Buy three books. Give it to somebody you know. There, there's, there's probably weddles in your neighborhood or, or weddles that you know that yeah. they need to, they need to see, hear this testimony. And um, go, go support my brother. It, it, it's uh, from the streets to the throne. Isaiah Blancas. Yeah, it's on Amazon. Uh, matter of fact, uh, yeah. uh, uh, somebody p please put his info there too. Follow him. Uh, uh, he, he's gonna have a show to, uh, Friday night. No Sunday night. I'm gonna jump on there. Sunday. Son, where, where yeah. can they where can they follow you on there? Like where can they get on there and 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 and, and see what follow his ministry? What he's doing, man. Okay. Yeah. Like uh, uh, my 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 Facebook is Isaiah and Evelyn Blancas. Isaiah and Evelyn Blancas. And if someone's on here, I think I saw Anna Garcia on here. She watches the Gangs for Jesus show and she watches G's Night Out Coffee Show. Thank you, um, Sister Anna. She, um, Anna, yeah. So she, she, she'll post that up. Okay, she's posting up the, the where you could get the book right now. And if you could post up to Anna, my Facebook page and also the Gangsters for Jesus. It's it's under the Gangsters for Jesus show or the Gangsters for Jesus. Hmm. Um, I, I'm learning all this stuff, Canal. You know, I, I appreciate you doing this for me because for me, I've, I'm new to the stuff like this, so this is helping me out. Um, but yeah, my YouTube channel is under Gangster Preacher. Y'all go, y'all go subscribe and, to his channel, man. Show my brother some love. Yeah, YouTube channel is under Gangster Preacher. My Facebook is under Isaiah and Evelyn Blancas. Uh, my website is www.gangsterpreacher.com. And I also wanted to say this, man. Promote my canal, G's Night Out Coffee Show, mm. and G's YouTube. Is comedian Gilbert's world. Shout out to so Gilbert, you guys. Man. Show him love too. Yeah, yeah. man, because he, he's he's an awesome man of God. Actually, the Gangs for Jesus show and all that started because he told me, "Can I do one episode?" And I said, "This is your thing, can I?" You know what I mean? I don't get on all that stuff and this and that. I preach to God. I go, well, "That's what I do." And he's like, "Do it one time." And now we're getting like thousands and thousands of views. You know, like anywhere from like three to ten, eleven thousand views. So I'm like, "Wow!" You know what I mean? Like it's tripping me out. I'm like, so it, it really made me see. Like this is a platform for God that I can really use, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, hey, you know what? So I'm grateful I, I, for you having me on. I, I tell people all the time, Apostle Paul was, he was in prison writing letters like everywhere. Everyone yeah. got a letter. If if he was alive yeah. today, if, if Paul was alive today, he'd have a, a Twitter, he'd have an Instagram, he'd have a YouTube, like, everything. He'd use everything. He'd have everything. Yep, just for the gospel. Everything. Man. So uh, I'm learning everything. because I, I wanna. 
I want to I want to be in the times that 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 I can that we can share Jesus, man. So I, I use the rap music as a tool. I know they I know we grew up yeah. listening to rap. To me, it's just preaching on the beat. Yeah. It's getting their attention. It's yeah, just, man. Speaking I, just, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Cause I, I can't wait to go out with you know with, with your kingdom home people or whatever. Like when you told me, man. and I want to buy a whole bunch of remnant CDs from you, bro. I don't even want to. I don't even want to hear it yet till I see you and get it from you. Man, uh, you like haven't I even heard the last the, time. Man, you haven't heard the remnant. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, no, oh. I'm still on those two that that I got, and I like got the red letter one and uh I, living girl, and I and I'm stuck on those because I've been hearing those I, every day. I want to bring you day. with with us to the prison, man. I I, <laughs> I, I wanna I wanna hear some penitentiaries with you, man. I want you to meet my brother Rhino and all the brothers, man. I I love the Jesus inside Amen. of you, bro. I know you got a word. Amen. I know you got some scriptures for us, man. Let's let's feed the people yeah. the, the word of God. Yeah, I, I want to say this though real quick because um um you guys could also get my book directly from me. Um, under my my uh, messenger, I have like beanies, too, sweaters, shirts. You'll see all that when you guys subscribe, uh, uh, you know, to my Facebook and all that stuff. I have a whole bunch of different stuff. But let me tell you what we do, just so you guys know that it's not just me profiting all this money and keeping all this. We go to a lot of rehabs all over, and I give books out free to these people because they cannot afford them. You know what I mean? And yeah. and I can't I can't sit there. And even sometimes when, my, when I'm at events, like even me, when we Canal Brian Trejo, where uh, the event we did last, um, there was people I couldn't afford it, and I just give it to them, man. I can't take it. You know what I mean? Because um, I, I feel like if Jesus was here, he'd do the same thing. You know what I mean? So a, a lot of these books, I'm giving out free to these people. So when you support people like me and Brian Trejo, you know, we do stuff like that. We give out, like I, out here in, uh, in Chuco Town, El Paso, we hit real bad areas. I've sent Brian Trejo some pictures. And they're wearing from the streets to the throne shirts on. Yep. Some some people will fund some. A lot of them I give out free because I want them to be repping something that has to do with God. And and and, and atmospheres are shifting in all these places we're going to. And, and it really touches them when people like me or Brian Trejo or people like that that are soldiers go out there and that have books out and music and stuff like that because they're like, wow, man, you're coming out here to preach to people like us. It inspires them, man. Just like he said, there's more Brian Trejos, there's more Weddles out there yeah. that need Jesus Christ. And, yeah. and let me tell you, man, when you when you touch them for God's glory, they become straight up warriors for God. Yep. Straight up warriors. Yep. They, 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 we direct that energy that we did the wrong way. We direct it for the kingdom. Yep. And you know what? When all of heaven is with you, man, come on, the yep. love of Jesus. That's why, that's why I love about when yep. God touch, touches the heart of a, of a gangster or a criminal or a murderer. Like, he softens it, and then he, he takes the hate out, and he puts... <laughs> supernatural love forgiveness like he he begins to just oh. you begin to see the the way we were created to be we were created to be vessels yeah. of love we were created to be soldiers yeah. that fight the way jesus fights man and and i've learned like man the truth is is i never I'm, i'll never fight another human being the, the way i used to ever because the the closer i get to jesus man i I, I know that the, the, my fight is not in the flesh. My fight is in the principalities, in the spirits That's behind right. it, and, and and to defeat right. the enemy in the spirit. You're gonna have you. It's lo, it's weapons of righteousness in our right and our left hand. And I say it all the time: is it's not hollow tips that we shoot no more. It's, it's hallelujahs and faith and obedience and submitting yep. to God's will. And it's, it's it's our honor now to suffer for Jesus. It's an honor now to, yeah, to take the lashes on my back for Jesus. It's an honor now to amen. To, to continue to j just go forward because when I lost my twin, man, I, my my world was upside down. That's the closest vato on earth, and like that that, that was my my other half uh, besides my yeah. wife. And um, for God to still be with me, for God to send me into the prison yeah. now, the healed Brian, not the miserable Brian, not the I'm, I want revenge yeah. Brian, but to be a healed man. And, 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 and then point people to how to be healed like only God can do it. So all glory goes to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for that. Amen. You're, 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 you're shooting um, hollow tips in the spiritual realm now against <laughs> the devil. <laughs> hey, hollow hallelujahs, baby. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Cool. So, yeah. All right, man. So let's get to a little bit of word. But I want to talk to the people today, man, about uh, Mephibosheth. Come on. Uh, it goes good with, with my testimony, and I, I always like bringing this up, man, because um, Mephibosheth was someone that that was 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 dropped, man, and and, and I just want to talk about that. I'm just going to read a few scriptures. It's Second uh, Samuel nine one through eight, and then I'll just talk about that a little bit, and, and then I'll end it. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and read again. It's Second Samuel nine one through eight. And it said, David asked, is there anyone still left in the house of Saul whom I can show my kindness for Jonathan's sake? Mm. Now, there was a, a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They called him and appeared before David and said, 
to him, are you Ziba, your servant? He replied, the king asked, is there no one still in the house of Saul whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, there is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in both feet. Mm. Where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, he is now some Akir, son of Amil and Lodobar. So King David had him brought from Lodobar, from the house of Makil, son of Amil. Saul, Saul came to meet David and bowed down and paid him honor. David said, Mephibosheth, your servant, he replied. Don't, don't be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. Mm. I will restore you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, what is your servant? that you should notice a dead dog like me. Now, look, fam, I want to talk to you about, about Mephibosheth right now because I believe that we have a Mephibosheth generation in this time, that there's people that are lost out there, man, that need that need God, that need the Holy Ghost, no. that need change and, 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 and things broken off their lives. And, and Mephibosheth, like it says here, he says he looked at himself like a dead dog. And I think a lot of times, a lot of us, you know, don't just just look at ourselves like dead dogs, but me and my homeboys, we live like dogs. Yeah. We, we were in cages since we were kids. You know what I mean? We were in cages. We we're incarcerated. We we're locked up. We live like dogs on the streets. You know, we shot dope. We did we we did coke. We did all this stuff, pills, all these things that that the devil wanted us to do, man. And let me tell you, there's there's a lot of people out here in these streets that I still go preach to yeah. that that think just like Mephibosheth that they're dead dogs, that they're no good, man. And let me tell you, God came, you know, to set these captives free, man, to, to set these peeps free Come on. from people like us, from true soldiers that are willing to go out and preach this gospel to these people, man. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something, man. Mephibosheth, let me tell you who he is. He was Saul and Jonathan's grandson and, and, and son. And, and Jonathan and Saul died in battle. So the, the maid that was taking care of, of Mephibosheth was running and dropped him. He became crippled in his ankles. So he couldn't walk right no more. Let me tell you, we have a, a generation right now that has been dropped. Yeah. They have been dropped by families, by moms, by dads, by uncles, by, by, by different people, maybe by friends, maybe by a teacher, maybe by the system. Maybe, I don't know who you've been dropped by, man, mm -hmm. if you're watching this show tonight. But let me tell you, there's a Mephibosheth generation out here that needs that the king's kiss to come out here and step out and mm -hmm. step out in faith and break these bondages and break these chains and let them know that God can break the yokes off people's lives, man, yes. that God is real, that he's still a God that restores and a God that that heals and a God that performs miracles and miracles in clusters from heaven. Miracles still happen. Miracles still take place. Me and my kind of Brian Clark are truth of that. We're, we're, we're proof of that and truth of that, of God's word being lived out in the flesh. Amen. Now living in the spirit and hitting this enemy back and taking that territory back from the enemy's camp. Yeah. Amen. So, so let me tell you guys, man, Lord and Ball was a dead place. And a lot of people, especially in these times right now are in a dead place. Lord and Bar is a dead place where nothing grew, yeah. where nothing grows, where everything was dead, where, where stuff wasn't good. As a matter of fact, Mephibosheth in those days, when, when you were crippled or something like that, it's not like nowadays they didn't have wheelchairs and special parking and all this different stuff like that. They would treat you like you were a dog. That's why he said, I, I, I'm, what am I but a dead dog mm. in the king's sight? That's why he said that. And let me tell you guys something, man. A lot of people right now are living in Lodabar. And unless soldiers step up to the occasion, especially in these end times, and get out of your comfort zone and do something for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that King Jesus wants us to do, then they're not going to know that there's, a, that there's someone that can break that bondage off their lives. They're not going to feel no hope. They're not going to know no inspiration because no one's giving it to them. So family of God, let me tell you something. We're dealing with, with, with people that live in Lodombar right now and with a Mephibosheth generation where people have been dropped, yeah. have been dropped, especially right now, especially in these times when it's crazy. We're living in end times. If there's any time to shift and do what I'm telling you, these are the times to do it. Yeah. We can't be playing games no more, church. We got to be on fire for God. We, let, we need to let the enemy know when we step in his territory that, that he hears our armor clank, shake, and rattle. That he knows the true soldiers in his territory to take territory back from his camp for God's glory. Mm. That's what it boils down to. Let me tell you something, family of God, what happens with Mephibosheth, right? 
It says, it says that, that David goes and says, I'm going to take you to my palace. I'm going to take you to my, my kingdom. Mm. You know, and, and David is a Jesus type. He's a Jesus type. So, so Mephibosheth, let me tell you another thing about him before I even go there. He didn't, he didn't know who he was anymore. He thought he was a dead dog. Yeah. He didn't know who he was. But but let me tell you who he was. And let me tell you who you are. Come on. You people out here watching right now. He had royal blood flowing through his veins, just as you do. Identity. But he had lost conception of who he was because he had been dropped, family. Yeah. And a lot of times we've been dropped. And we don't know who we are because we have not been set free because someone like Gina or me or Brian Trejo has not gone out there and preached to these people that are truly hurting and that are truly lost and that truly need the gospel of Jesus Christ to, to change their lives yeah. and their mentalities for greatness. Because God has greatness in every single one of you that are watching today, this day. And God wants to set you free on this night. Yes, Lord. God wants to shift something in you. He wants you to know that you don't have to stay in Lodenbar, that you don't have to be a Mephibosheth, that greatness can come out of you, just like it did on me and my canal, Brian. Greatness can come out of you. So let me tell you what happens, family of God. He ends up going to the to the to the to the king's um, palace. You know what I mean? And 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 in those days, all the important people would eat. He he would have Mephibosheth there before the important people would come in, and he would eat there every day, every day with the most important people in the kingdom. Come on. And, and let me tell you what David would do. And, and God does this for you too. And this is what I was going to talk about, what Brian, my God, not Brian was saying. It's funny and because he confirmed it. But look, he put Mephibosheth on that table where the, where the, the, the tablecloth would cover his deformity mm. before the people would come in. And let me tell you guys something, man. When you're invited to the king's table, to King Jesus' table, mm -hmm. he has a way of covering up all your sin from disqualifying you to coming to the kingdom of God and, and accepting salvation. When, when Jesus hung on that cross, on the cross of Calvary for me and you, and that a drop of blood fell from his foot onto the ground, it represented covenant between heaven and earth. Yeah. And for us to have true salvation and to be true lights in, this, in these end times and in these times that we're in, Amen? Amen. And let me tell you something, man. Just like that, like that uh, tablecloth covered Mephibosheth's deformity, when Christ's blood was shed for you, it covers a multitude of sins. Yeah. It covers all your sins. That's right. You don't have to be ashamed no more. You don't have to live in Lord and Bar no more. You don't have to feel like if you're not good enough no more. Because let me tell you something, just like my my Kana Brian was saying, everyone in this kingdom has a job to do. And everyone, no matter who you are, even if you're just cleaning toilets, you are important to God's kingdom. You you are you you are so important that God, Jesus would have came and just died for you and you alone if he had to. Oh man. But there's great news, family of God. Jesus came to set us free. Come on. And, and let me tell you, Jesus' blood does that. And I just want to tell you guys, man, that it's been such an honor to be with you guys. I didn't want to make it so long because I knew a testimony was going to be long and we we're going to have, have a conversation. But, but you know, I, I get down and I preach like this on my shows, maybe they're more rowdy. But I just want to tell you guys out there, man, that the gangster preacher loves you guys. Come on. If, if no one has told you out there that, that they don't love you, well, I'm here to tell you, I love you. Mm. Jesus loves you. Love you, man. And he can set you free. Thank you, Jesus. He can set you free. And, and, and I just want to say this prayer real quick, a salvation prayer. Is there some, if there's anyone watching that this touched and that does not know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for forgiving my sins and shedding your blood and dying at the cross of Calvary for my sins. I accept you, Father, in my heart this day, this night, or whoever's watching later on, to say that. I accept you. And, and now my name is written in the Lamb books of life. And now let me tell you guys something. If you pray that, say amen. It's amen. just that simple. Say what you, you mean. You know, religion, mean what you religion, wants, religion wants you to jump through hoops. It wants you to be in a closet and say, oh, if you, if you do this, then you're going to get this. Or, or if you do that, then, then God's going to do this. No, no. It was paid at the cross. Family of God, you're all good. You say that prayer, you're all good. Get discipleship.
Amen. Get discipleship. And, and, and let God flow to you like he does to me and my canal, Brian Trejo, man. I just want to say it was a great honor, you know, being on your show, my canal, Brian Trejo. And, and I got much love for all of you guys. And I thank you guys, man, for tuning in and watching this show and share, share, share it out, family of God, and, and, and go out there and friend me and do all that. And um, and 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 so you guys could see Brian Trejo too, the phone interview we're gonna have on Sunday, man. I love you, fam. God man. bless you guys. I love yes. you, Kanan. I love you too, man. Amazing testimony, amazing word. Right now, somebody who's out there, um, uh, I see somebody who's called Demon Loco six six six. Uh, hey, I don't know who you are, but um. I speak peace and love over your heart and your mind. Whatever would make you want to represent for the kingdom of darkness, whoever misrepresent the kingdom of heaven to you and made you feel like you just don't want nothing to do with God. I pray that today that God reveals who he is in your life, in your heart. And I pray a uh, peace over you, man of God. I pray uh, the anointing that will break the yoke, that your eyes will open up and you'll see that uh, that you're wanted in his in his family, that you he has a place for you at the table, like my brother said. And you're not too far from forgiveness. So whoever you are, man, that is called demon local, I pray that you begin to be local for Jesus. I pray that uh that your heart and heart will be softened today and that you know that you're loved. Uh there's a sister named Lacey who uh who says she has COVID. Um I speak healing over you. I pray that God's Amen. God's will for you is is to be healed. I pray that God's will over your life uh comes to pass. I pray that you know that you're loved, you're not forgotten. Be strong in the Lord. Don't panic. Um be prepared uh and and, and just uh worship. I, mean, I think one of the greatest things for, for healing to come is is to uh, repentance, uh, asking God to forgive you of maybe anything that you've done to offend him, Sister Lacey, and you begin to ask God to put his healing hand on you, begin to forgive your enemies, begin to forgive yourself, uh, let go of a negative pattern, if, if whatever's keeping you from growing, just let go of those habits and toxic relationships. I just declare this over your life. Uh, there's other people on their prayers. Uh, everybody, you see my brother's... Uh, um, Sister Anna's put in all the uh, Gar Sister Anna Garcia's put in all his his uh, contact info, the book info, and everything he's doing. Please get behind my brother, support it. Go like his channel. Uh, Sunday night, he's gonna bring me on his show. It's gonna be amazing. He continues to uh, to do great things. Keep him lifted, his family lifted as well. Uh, this has been an awesome, an awesome Give Him Heaven podcast for my brother, man. I relate. Every, I know Amen. some people on there were like, man, some of these stories are gruesome. But like I said in the beginning, yeah. to know where we're headed, you got to know where we've been. And it, it, maybe, yeah. you, maybe you, you're like, there's too much detail. But you got to understand that when God pulls you from that darkness and he pulls you into the yeah. light, man, it's, it's radical soldiers like my brother Blanca that... Uh, that, that go into that darkness and God uses to pull other people that are in bondage. And it is an evil world. Like, like whether you want to uh, deny it or maybe ignore that fact that there is a world that, that, that is evil is a world that, that is, is just not uh rated R it, it's, it's actually gruesome to watch. And it's, it's reality for some yeah. people, murder, death, yeah, the drug, the drug gang, the street life. Like there is a side of that, of that street life. I mean, maybe, maybe you're, you're sheltered from that and you never seen it, but there is a side of that yeah. where people feel like they can't come back. But for my brother to come yeah. back and he's telling you he made there was a covenant he made with the enemy that the blood of Jesus broke that covenant. And for him to stand bold for the Lord today, I salute, I salute all the soldados de Jesus out there, man. All the Blancos out Amen. there, all the Trejos out there that are out there uh, putting in work and and standing and still being a soldier, but for the right army. Still being a soldier, but for but for the for the right kingdom. Uh we salute you guys out there. Uh the the sister Amen. the sister Gina's out there that are that are praying and preaching with passion and a hey, your fruit, Amen. your fruit is evident and it and it remains when you abide in the Lord. So we salute the sister Gina's out there. Uh, yeah. thank you for the for the chapter who go into the prison thank you for the yeah. thank you for those who are police officers that are that are serving the lord and yeah you, you're just not uh, yeah. you're treating people like people and we yeah. salute you because because you're out there uh, fighting the good fight the right way as Amen. well man and and man it's awesome to, to just see hear these testimonies with the blood because the enemy hates it and i know he sent some people on here like for that for that dude named demon loco to come on here and say he represents the yeah. kingdom of darkness that's just him asking for attention and for, he's saying, yeah. I need, I want prayer. Like, so we're praying he for you. He needs Jesus. Yeah, we need you. Amen. We need you, man. So, <laughs> hey, so before we go, if, if, if there's a young, a young Blanca out there and you could, and right now, and it, you could tell him something, you know, maybe he just clicked on here. Maybe someone shared, shared it on his phone. He's like, what are you about to talk about? Like, what would you tell him right now? What would you tell him? It was you. It was you uh, 20 years ago. Man, I, I would tell you, give give God a, a chance. And, and I would say, if if you'd be honest with yourself and give God one year of your life, just one year, 
and truly, truly give them that place in your life, your life will never be the same again. Mm. Never. That's good. And um, I, I would say that I would say um, um, get around people like, like me or Brian Trejo, find people like that, that are soldiers. Because if, if you are the way that me and my canal Brian were, you want to be around hardcore people we are hardcore, but we're hardcore and bold for Christ. Yeah. You know, and I, I see a lot of, of even street soldiers that want to be around me. I know, I know Brian feels the same way because we're bold like that. Yeah. And, and so, so if you want to be around people that are down, be around people that are down for King Cristo, you know what I mean? Come on, man. And that's it. People, people just want what's real. And, and, and what you yeah. seen in Gina was real. So you were like, you related to that realness. Like, wait a minute. Yeah. She's, she's just like me, but she's on the other side. And, 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 and it is, it is, it is capable to be real for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like we just, they just want to see it. You know what I mean? They want to see if the love is real. That's another thing that I loved about your testimony. The way she loved it, you were like, okay, I knew she was real. She preached in my face, but now I'm seeing that her love is real as well. And I think that's the yeah. main, that's the main ingredient that we're identified how we belong to. Yep. It's not it's not because you speak in tongues. It's not because you're in the worship team. Nah. It's not how many sermons you preach. No. It's the love that you have for people exactly. that identifies who you belong to. And um yep. and not just to love anyone who who you love. It's to love those that don't love you. You know, I, I, I always tell the I tell the homies now, I'll be like, hey, I, I, I'm not impressed by your gangster. Like the G inside of you exactly. that I want to see. I want to see how you it's love Jesus. people. Yeah, I want to see the God, exactly. in you, the God of forgiveness. <laughs> yeah. I want to see the the God of restoration yeah. in you. Do you want peace with people? Are you quick to make peace? Like that's the that's the yeah. G, the God in you that I'm impressed by. Yeah, like exactly. Because like, I meet I meet people. They they know Hebrew. They know theologies, and it's yeah. all good. You know knowledge of the word. Yeah, but, yeah. but your yeah. love is what stands out to me. The way you love yeah. people, the way you care about the the lost, the the way you care yeah. about the inmates, like the way you care yeah. about the homeless, like the way you care about yeah. your wife, the way you care about your your just yep. make, that's what impresses me and attracts me to, yeah, exactly. to be around men of God who are I know yeah. you I know you're a soldado I know you can knock people out but for you to be gentle yeah for you to be yeah. another, another level is to me I'm like man yeah. man come on now that's yeah. absolute. You know yeah, I mean? there's a big difference, Canala, between um, and I tell people this all the time because you could preach on a pulpit, and which we do too, but you could just do that and say, "Oh, go feed the 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 hungry, go clothe the poor, go visit those in prisons." But you just saying that and you doing it is a totally different thing. Yeah, definitely. And and it means so much to those people, man. You never know, you know. I know sometimes you've probably got this. I've been preaching 18 years now, me, but um. Sometimes you say stuff you don't even think it means nothing, but those people will remember that little saying, and you don't even remember saying it. But it just meant so much to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. just, just a a a a, a, a word of, of of inspiration of hope. Yeah. You know, coming from comes from someone like that. So you know, what's crazy is like, uh, I don't listen to too much rap music. I, ain't nothing wrong with it. But I, I love worship, but when so I get a lot of rappers who want to be around me. And it, you know it's cool. Yeah. I, I, lo I love the brothers who are using the gift the right way. But I, 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 I watch the life they live. Like the greatest rap song that these vatos will ever sing is the life they live when the music goes off. Like that's what exactly. I'm looking at. I'm looking at their life. And then after I know yeah. who they are, when I hear their music, yeah. the volume turns up in my ear. Like okay, this, exactly. now man, you're going off because I know that when the music's off, you're that person. So exactly. when you so when your sermon not even a, a rapper a pastor so when you when you're preaching your sermon but I see when, when I see you off the pulpit and you're being who God exactly. calls you to be that light that you tell him go exactly. be that light when I see you being the light and then I hear you preach yep. the volume turns yep. up I'm like yeah exactly like, amen exactly so so man yep. glory to God man for transformation glory to God for a renewed mind that he can take this mind that had street laws and politics and and all this and he can. And start renewing it with the things of God, the righteousness of God, the 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 holiness of God. Because I want to be, I want to look more like Jesus every day. You know what I mean? Amen. I, like you know Amen. how we say, I, I want to be, I want it to be real. I want it to power. Like I want to, I want to love like He loves. I want, I yeah. want, I want to, I want Him to perfect His holiness inside of me. Not a list of rules. His love inside yeah. of me. That that it's an honor. To obey your rules, like it's an yeah. honor to be a, to tell the truth. It's an it's honor. A, it's, a, it's an honor to be doing yeah, this. Yeah, like like to be preaching the gospel. Oh man, I gotta. I, I guess I gotta. No, no, it's an honor. The same way that we used yeah. to be no, soldados for the evil. Like it was an honor yeah. to fight for the black. It was an honor to. But now it's an honor to forgive my enemy. It's an honor to, yeah. to to have integrity and want to want more because we're not perfect. But for us to want to look more like him, that's all he asked for, man. He asked for yeah. you to be faithful and fruitful, man. That's it. 
Yeah. That's all he asked yeah. for. Be you know, um, I, I, I seen this movie, um, Ape Man, I guess, before we go or whenever you're going to go. Up, but um, I seen this movie, Ape Man. He was Bruce Lee's mentor, mm. a real person, IP man. I, I, Ape and, Man, um, I love it. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I do too. It's good. But Bruce Lee comes out of this nice car, bro, and he has these big glasses on. And, you know, Hollywood. He sees, he sees, yeah, all Hollywood. And he sees <laughs> it, man. He's walking to go get a cup of tea. And he's like, um, hey, look at my car. You like it? And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's all right. And he's like, well, come on. I'll, I'll take you to go get that tea. And he's like, no, I'll walk. And he's like, well, can I walk with you? And he's like, yeah, you can walk with me. And he, he starts telling him, hey, can, um, can, uh, can can I can I still be student? Like, are you are you still my master? Are you my mentor? Are you are you mad at me? Like, did I do something wrong? And he says, No, I didn't do nothing wrong. He says, Let me ask you something. Everything that I've taught you, can can you uh, can you get untrained by that? And he said, No. And he says, Then how can I not be your mentor? And and what 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 that what that movie spoke to me, bro. Even even in stuff like that, I get stuff God stuff out of it. Yeah, is that. He wasn't impressed, bro, with his car and his glasses and all his stuff. He was impressed with what he taught him and what was inside of him and that coming out. Yeah. And that's what God's impressed was with us. Yeah, because it's, it's like an orange or an apple, Kanan. If if you smash it with a sledgehammer, what it'll, comes out it'll, of it? it'll demolish it. Yeah. But if you squeeze an orange the right way, an apple right, it makes a- apple juice or orange juice. So when true soldiers are squeezed, you see who they really what are. They truly anointed. Yeah. Yeah. What comes out yeah. of him, man? Yeah. yeah. So true, man. God's not impressed by our titles. He's not going to call me Pastor Brian or Pastor Brian. Yeah, Bianca. exactly. Hey, you're my son and my brother. Uh, and, yeah. that's, and that's it, a servant. We're just servant. Brother yeah. brother Brian, servant. And I love that about God that he's not a respecter of, of persons or favoritism. Like, no, there's no partiality, yeah. man. He ha- he has a, yeah. a table prepared for all of us. And you know what? He, he yeah. takes the one in the back that don't nobody want, man. He takes yeah, the, exactly. he takes that vato in the back that nobody don't nobody want to hug because he the, smells. He takes that sin the in the banquet. back. The, he takes the one that that, that that everyone gave up on. Like there's no hope for him. Yeah. Hey, and he brings yeah. him to the front and says, "You know what? I, I yeah. you have a place with me if you want. You have a place yeah. with me." It's like the the banquet, like where they where they go out to eat and they bring all the street peeps in. <laughs> That's right. And, and what's beautiful is is clothe yourself y'all listening today i know i know we went a little longer than usual but clothe yourself in jesus yeah. clothe yourself in his blood his righteousness is yes. what makes you right before the eyes of the father hey i love you guys yeah. jesus love you guys my brother pray them out right Amen. now in the name of jesus all right let's pray father i thank you god for for everyone that tuned in tonight yes lord. i thank you that 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 seeds fell on good ground tonight father yes lord. even that brother that was saying that he's demonic and all that too i was too god you can break those chains yes. because of your love and, and so I just thank you, Father, that, that your love right now is touching everyone. Yes, Lord. That, that, this, that this podcast motivated people to get out of their comfort zones and do more for your glory. Not yes. for their glory, but for your glory, Father. And just like me and Brian were talking about, God, that they're not doing it, doing it just as a show, but they truly are being true soldiers and soldiering up for you, yes, uh, even when no one's seen. Yeah, I, I pray that everyone on this podcast that's seen right now that truly loves Jesus Christ that even if they're somewhere and, and they don't even have to speak a word that they'll know that, that they're yours, that they're God's kids, mm. they're God's, they're from God's kingdom, you know, that, that we're ambassadors for Christ, that this is not our home, yes. that our true home is heaven. And so I just thank you, God, for everything you're doing. I thank you for, for my canal, Brian, Father. I thank you for blessing KMF and, and everything that he does and multiplying him even more, God, and for blessing him to, to be a blessing, Father, to as many people as he possibly can, Father. I just thank you for his ministry. I thank you for everything that you're going to keep doing through him and for him, Father, and for everyone around him, for his whole clique that rides with him, Father, that, that, are, that are straight up G soldiers for your kingdom. You. And so I just thank you, Father. I thank you for using both of us, Father, at a whole nother level, Father, or for letting us reach new heights, Father, for letting us come with new tactics to attack the enemy with in his territory and to snatch those souls back, Father, and, and, and let them see that we're real when they need us, that we ain't no fakes, that we're the real deal. And, and because, we, because we trust in you, yes. because we trust in King Jesus, you're our King, thank you're you. our Lord of Lords. Thank you, Jesus. And so I just thank you, God, for everyone that watched this podcast. I thank you for moving in everyone's families and everyone's lives. I, I, I speak death to COVID. I speak death to all this negative stuff that's going on. And, and even if this stuff keep does keep going on, that let them know that they're secure in you, God, that we're all good. 
Even if we're in prison for it, that you know we're gonna preach this gospel like Paul did, and even if we die for this, we go to heaven. We don't have nothing to fear as true believers, as true soldiers. You, and so I just thank you for boldness coming upon the people I watch this show, and especially love, Father, for the lost, yes. for the hurting, yes. for the wounded, for the Mephibosheths, for the people that are living in Lodenbar. And so I just thank you for it, God. And it was, it was such a great honor, God, to be on on my canal's podcast. And I just we we give you all the honor and glory, Father. None of it's for us; it's all for you, Father. Yes, and and I just thank you for other fellow true soldiers that do stuff I do. And 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 even like I told him, you know, he's flying in, in planes and I'm driving the car. It's all good though. We still soldiering up for you, King Jesus. Mm. And, and and ain't no hating going on here. Ain't nothing but love. And and, and I'm very proud of of all my kind of Brian's accomplishments. And may mm. may he get a lot more accomplishments done during his lifetime until you come back jesus and, and may more souls be saved through his ministry than ever god and my ministry for your glory father in jesus name amen amen to god be all the glory hey i love you man i'm very grateful for, for your you, testimony God. man um it hit it, it hit home tonight tonight hit home in so many ways man um um it's crazy man uh you went through this journey with you i had i had a guate that looked just like me that they went through the journey we went through you know and uh yeah. For him to take the next I'll, step into eternity, you know, I can't wait yeah. to see my brother one day. But until then, I got brothers yeah. like you. I got other other brothers yeah. on earth that can that uh we we we're uh amen. We're, we got assignments to do. I think I think me and you we got we, we got kind of like the same assignments and maybe in different different amen. sets of the city. But I'm very grateful yeah. for you. I'm very grateful for your uh your marriage. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for you. Thank you for your family, man. To, uh, Brandon, you. Brandon, your your wife, man. Thank you for the prayer yesterday. And uh, I, 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 Sunday, Amen. Sunday night, man. Go tune into my brother's Amen. show. It start. Uh, what time in El Paso time? What time does it start? El Paso time. It's gonna be um six thirty. Six thirty. It's gonna be seven thirty your time mm -hmm. and uh six thirty my time. Five thirty Cali time. Cali time, man. It's going up. Make sure you tune into a show. Also on Friday night, I got PDO with Jared and Jamie uh, on Give Him Heaven podcast at 7 o'clock or 7.30 uh, Texas time on Friday night. Friday night, PDO. Sunday night. And my brother has his show. We're going to be on there. Make sure that you tune in. We love you guys. Jesus loves you. Please remember that you're not forgotten. You are remembered. Until then, man, keep giving them heaven wherever you're at. Amen, y'all. Amen. Amen. Much love, Canal. I'll talk to you soon. Much love. I love you, brother. 